Welcome everybody to another Rise TV. We are live on a Sunday morning. It's me and Jared today. Victoria's out of office, but uh, she'll be back next week with us. Uh, we are excited for today's show as we are going to dive into Cosmic Human Design with Team QSI, some new people with us from Quantum Stellar Initiative. And uh, we're excited, Jaren, aren't we? Very much so. Very much so. You're all going to see the wind's blowing. My hair's going to blow. That's all natural. That's all natural blow there. Yeah, we're excited for today, definitely. I know some of you, some of you are, are looking forward to seeing the images the faces of a few of these guests here today. Some of you have seen them, some of you have not. So we're we're privileged to be uh, be with uh, the uh, revealing guests here today to talk about cosmic human design, which is not new for most of the Rise audience as well as much of the QSI audience. But we're going to take it to new levels today and uh, see where we go. I'm in the, I'm in the element of surprise. I don't know what's up. Everyone thinks I've got stuff planned. I don't. As normal, Jaren's here. Greg does all the work, you know. He's all planned out. Jaren's like, what are we doing, Greg? No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are Rise TV, a limitless mindset culture company. We are here to build leaders, people who see brothers and sisters, people who rise each other up, people who own their shit, and people who are here to unlock those sacred gifts that are only from within, leaving, living life from the inside out, right? Uh, taking control of the wheel, and uh, not allowing the, the tides of the ocean of the external world to, to push us. We are, the, we are the tides, and that's where we wanna be. And with the cosmic human design, we become even more of those tides. So we're really looking forward to diving into this subject. We have a little bit before on this show, but this is gonna be even a lot better, I think, of, of, a, of a powerful episode in diving into this stuff with this amazing cast and crew we have here. Of course, I am Greg Schubacher, a visionary and a New Earth leader. We also have the traveling motivational speaker, teacher of manifestation, cosmic human design coach. That would be light him up, Mr. Kenyon, Professor Jerry Kenyon. Yep, I will never <laughs> let that one down. Just a quick moment, I'll just say this. I've often talked about destiny points, you know, parts, you know, points in your life where, you know, there's a certain amount of time or whatever it is you're doing that has significant meaning, you know, it just means, to you. and I'll say that's, that's what today is for me. When I look at my past, even 15 years ago, of my vision and my dreams to be with the family of light and to be, you know, co-creating a new world and working together in passion and in freedom and in uh, infinite abundance, along with the human design system of wanting to get it true and correct because I knew that's the most powerful system on the planet, but it had to be a little corrected and then was, and then to be here with the heresy of bringing it out the last few years and then having it getting intertwined with QSI. So rise TV intertwining with QSI, the greatest humanitarian group on the planet. The fact that that's all like coming together. And then I'm sitting here on this show with these amazing five people is, or, you know, or four others, I should say is today is, is an amazing experience for me. And it made me even remember this morning, I was driving down the street and I started to think about it. And the cosmos started to trigger me into memories from back in 2012 of where I was, where my mind was, what I was seeing to remind me. And it made me feel grateful. And so I ask you all to feel grateful for where you're at in your life, what you now know, all that you've overcome, all that you will go towards, regardless of what you think is wrong or challenging um, not your way of living, not your way of viewing life that you see out there in the collective. Just be grateful for where you are, who you are around and where you're going, because you've got a magical life in front of you. And this is one of the elements that's here to support you in that magical life you are to live. Yeah, great stuff there. We're looking forward to this. And uh, well, let's, without further ado, bring in our panel here. Uh, QSI, our Quantum Stellar Initiative, is a world-leading community in stellar digital currency, education, ecosystem, and adoption. You can find them over on Telegram at Quantum Stellar Initiative. And uh, they also have combined the amazingness of spirituality, of understanding self with the currency, with technology, which is the future of this planet, without a doubt. So... Let's bring in Nicole, Ree, and of course, Emily. Welcome to the show. Uh, Emily, why don't we start with you quickly? 
Uh, Emily, you are join us every Wednesday nights for the School of Ohm, but you also do amazing work over there on Quantum Stellar Initiative. How's everything going over in your community? Well, first of all, great to be back with you. Thank you so much for having not just me this time, but also my two favorite girls in the whole world, Re and Roll Tide. They are basically like me, but the better versions of me. So in terms of QSI, we've had some really big weeks so far, bomb after bomb of, of massive D-classes. And I don't want to get too much into the details right now, but for those who are listening live on the call, I'm going to drop probably our biggest D-class to date at the end of this call. So I'm really looking forward to it because it's going to tie in so much of what we've been studying, not just in the stellar world, but also in the cosmic human design world. And people will see it's literally the same thing. Fantastic. And Emily, will you do me the honors of introing in uh, these two girls? Uh, maybe we start with Nicole first and give her an intro. Sure, happy to. So Nicole, probably everybody knows as CNC Roll Tide. She's originally from Dallas. She's moved over to Florida recently. And she is like the my other right hand. So I've got a, a right hand and another right hand. So I guess a left hand and a right hand. But Nicole is fantastic because I say Re is like me. Re is actually the super soldier version of me. Nicole is like me, but better. They're both like me, just but better. <laughs> so her background is in operations and she used to work for like a medical facility of sorts, um, basically taking care of healthcare. Um, so she's the director of operations there and she knows how to manage people because she doesn't put people below her. She is on equal playing field with everybody she works with. She is such a massive collaborator. And so all she does is find solutions for people to have that win-win-win scenario. So that's our lovely Nicole Roll Tide. All right, let and me then, uh, let me just say hi to Nicole first. Uh, Nicole, you want to unmute yourself? Nicole, welcome to Rise TV. Uh, really happy to have you here, and I hope everything is uh, going great for you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I just wanted to know um, how was your time with QSI, and how has that been uh, for your life? Um, it's been amazing. Um, especially I started out as, you know, the one, the, the lurker in the chat, um, very quiet. And then it kind of spawned into me doing edits for Emily. And then we had some cockroaches try to contact me. And of course I let Emily know right away. So she knew then that I could spot them and, um, and take them out. So that's kind of led me to where I am now. Awesome. Yeah. You have a lot of info. Inf how do you say that? Info, uh, I can't even say the word. <laughs> you have a lot of people trolling oh. you over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's referring to there. So, yeah, people were trolling you and trying to pull you away and trying to change your mind about things. And uh, you were able to stand your ground and uh, and stay in in, uh, in the amazing Quantum Star Initiative community of trust and, uh, and, and love and loyalty. So, uh, Emily, will hey. you... Uh, hey. Uh, I'm going to interrupt real quick, Greg. MG interruption. I'm the only one that can do that legally. No, just kidding. I just want to say a little bit, a little touch on, on Nicole here. She has a purpose that is to harmonize the vibration of a group to its core principles, values, and integrity. So just the little bit of the element of the cosmic human design already, for some of you who may know this young lady, this amazing lady, that's her purpose, and then her life's work, which is what she brings out, the purpose is more of inside. The life's work is what we bring out into the world, right? Is to basically communicate esoteric language into simplicity, into where you have plans, strategy, and communicational understanding from something that might be a little bit complex or really more cosmic in where it's at. So that's a simplified version, but She's designed to speak so that we get it and to pull in this new information that's cosmic as well as cause harmony amongst the group and yet spot corruption when there's a virus in the group and to make attention known to that aspect. So I'm just throwing that little bits in here and there as we go along. Mm. Yeah, Which will, it will make sense to chat while I always jump in and, and point them out and our method behind our madness. So it will all make sense after today. <laughs> Great. Uh, Emily, will you uh, intro in Re for us, please? 
so basically what I said, but 10,000 times better, that's, that's Jaren's intro. Oh. <laughs> so Re, as I mentioned earlier, she's basically our super soldier. Everything that I wish I could be in life, that's Re. <laughs> but Re, so actually both of them, um, as, as an aside, they, they both have backgrounds in military intelligence, in psychological operations. And so that's why we're such a, a structured team force, because the three of us combined can do things that most normal humans can't. That's the reason why we work so well in harmony together. That's why we work so well in harmony with the cosmos, but also with this massive Q mission that we are a part of. So Ri, without further ado, like our Hawaiian princess, she just does everything behind the scenes. Um, kind of like what Nicole was saying earlier, they started out just quiet observers of the chat, like most people who are in chat. And then one day, Nicole started to, you know, she asked, um, can I help you with this? Re didn't even ask. She just started to help. That's just the kind of person she is. And so she went from quiet observer for many, many months to me hearing about her on other channels because they were saying, I have a new clone running around, you know, <laughs> pretending to be me on different channels. So I thought, who is this person? I must figure this out. So I found Re's name. And then from there, it just kind of grew. I just watched her blossom from, you know, quiet observer, but fearless warrior <laughs> in other channels to coming in and being one of our helpers in our chat, just helping to answer questions. And then soon I said, will you, you know, will you be one of our admins? Will you be on the task force with us? And at first she said no, because she had so many things on her plate, but eventually she did say yes. And that was one of the happiest days of my life. Because from that time till now, um, many people who are in QSI will know that I've transitioned out of operations and I've been to full-blown intel for over one year now. And that's only because of Re and Roll Tide combination. So Re is my right hand and Nicole is her right hand, which is why they're basically my double right hand. And they do everything in operations regarding the running, the management of QSI. Well, welcome to the show, Re. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so I, I appreciate you because I, I do a lot of um, interactions with QSI. And a lot of times Emily is very busy or she's traveling or she's doing a lot of things. And Re is my person I go to. And same with Jaren, uh, dropping things to her, asking her questions, that kind of thing. And she's instant like quickly gets me my things I need so I love it uh, um, we really appreciate what you do behind the scenes how was your adventure with the quantum stellar initiative Benry oh this is like a dream come true I love it here um I can't even believe that Nicole and I are here today and our experience just being with everyone meeting new people it has been such um, a blessing for all of us and also um, just the fact that, you know, we have certain experiences and skills to bring, um, that's what makes us very unique. And so I guess we're gonna talk about that today with Cosmic Human Design. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just so people who aren't familiar with Quantum Stellar Initiative out there, you can see they have a huge team. They're almost like a corporation, you know, the, how big they are and the roles they play and the things they do. And the things they're into. So if you're not over there, go check them out. Um, start learning some things about Quantum Solar Initiative because you're going to really be blown away with the things they know and the places they're going in the future. And uh, that's why we love um, our Wednesday nights with Emily because we get to find out some things and we get to have some fun and we get to train some of the Quantum Solar Initiative people out there on understanding themselves better and becoming stronger uh, uh, avatars basically of themselves. So... Uh, great stuff there. Love that. Um, great intros to everybody. We had to get that over with uh, so yeah. everybody knew yep. who they were. Another interjection. So Ree's uh, got a purpose that's associated basically with the family, that the family thrives and that everybody plays their part. So she's here to radiate that as well to where, hey, is everybody following through with what they're committing to? Is everybody doing their own work? And at the same time, the tenderness and the connection of the family, everybody plays different roles. Everybody is making mistakes. Everybody has time to go through processes of growth and understanding of one another. So 
there's a little bit of an, a major element actually of the family involved and then her which her life's work is which is to bring out right to go towards all has to do with focus and i think many of you can imagine that and we nickname her the super soldier for good reason because her design is built that way and specifically with the life's work it's you know focus on the details in the now constantly so she's designed to be constantly focused on how do we grow what's next what do we need to do next and has a lot of energy consistently of which to bring out in that and if she's in her passion which she said she is then she's got the ability to go and go and go. So think of an individual doing the work who's also here to see the family thrive, all of QSI. I love it. I love that design. Um, I feel like I have a lot of that in myself. I, I love to create and, and push uh, envelopes forward and get things moving and go to the future. Uh, so it's amazing uh, to meet you, Ree, and, and to be able to, to have some time together in this creation zone. So um, I'm going to uh, quickly get into our intros. I'm going to do them a little quicker. I'm just going to summarize so that we can kind of move forward. We're going to have a lot going on in this show. So I just want to say that Rise TV is a show about evolution of society, technology, and consciousness. Um, we are here to build leaders, as I said earlier, and uh, we bring on amazing guests from all over the world. Uh, if you want to check out any of our stuff, you go over to risemediatv.com. Uh, Jaron is a coach uh, for manifestation and cosmic human design. So if you are interested in diving deeper into cosmic human design, go check out Jaron. Go email him at jaron at jaronkenyon.com. And then if you want to find out more about myself, um, I have a new uh, 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 place where you can find all of my stuff, which is beacons.ai slash limitless kingdom, limitless kingdom. So go check that stuff out. Uh, of course, I just entered in Quantum Solar Initiative, so just check those them out over at Telegram, t.me slash Quantum Stellar Initiative to find them. If you want to join their chat board, you're going to have to educate yourself a little bit. They don't just let anybody in that chat board. So remember, there is rules and restrictions to understanding that, hey, listen, you can't just come out as a rookie. you got to learn some things. So... That's a great little uh, little thing there that uh, mm -hmm. is amazing, I think, that puts a little bit more importance on what goes on in that chat. And uh, that's really neat that you do that. All right, so what I wanted to get to first is I just want to talk about um, the idea of cosmic human design as a, as a big picture thing, okay? Why do we want to know what cosmic human design is? Well, if we look at the world, we look at people. People are a lot of times confusing. They don't know what they want. Just ask, you know, any personal trainer when someone comes to them. They don't know what they want to do when a new client comes. They're like, I don't know. I just, I just want to get in better shape. Okay, what does that mean? What do you want, right? We have to zone in, even like manifestation. We have to zone in on what we actually want out of life. Well, if we know who we are from a, a big picture point of view, who designed us and why were we designed this way, right? If we look at God, let's say, for example, you say, God designed me. Well, there is a blueprint to who you are. You are a unique fingerprint. So when we are imprinted with this personality, with the way we work, we start to understand ourselves through cosmic human design. Now, there was originally human design, but Jaron and uh, Richard and some other people have noticed that it wasn't quite right. There was something off about it. And what they had found was the astrology that's used for it wasn't quite the right astrology to use. So they looked at true sidereal astrology and they started to implement that into uh, hu uh, human design to make cosmic human design. And all of a sudden things started to match really, really well. Jaren's worked with many, many clients He's changed their design. He's showing them what, it, what, it, what it's about. And it is changing people's lives because they feel like they're actually moving steps forward with each time they're using their design the right way. So when we look at a projector, for example, which is me, that's just one aspect of it, projector, right? That can be many things beyond that. But a projector itself, uh, creates things like the field of dreams, right? You remember the movie, the field of dreams. If you make it, they will come. 
And I have something to show you a little later about a projector, what I have come up with for the image of what they truly are. Um, so I'm a builder and then I'm invited into situations. If I go out there like a salesy, slimy, grimy person, I'm going to be rejected uh, every which way to Sunday. I will never get in that door because that is not part of my design. So that's just one aspect, just being a projector of where I'm at. So when I realized that, I said, oh, I have to redesign the way I do my life, the way I do my business, the way I communicate with my people, my family, my kids. All of a sudden you start to realize there's all this immense power in understanding your design. So that was just a quick little, uh, uh, little summary of what might be going through a, a cosmic human design. Uh, Jaron, you want to add to that? Yeah, just, you know, since I, I kind of happen to be the biggest uh, promoter initially here of the heresy in the human design world, and really for many people in the astrology world. And I know there's many human design gifted people out there that would really not like me if they had a conversation with me in front of people because it exposes a lot. Some of them know, some of them don't. But in saying that, many of us don't know, but my background is... The cosmos clearly showed me back in 2011 and 12 that human design was going to change the world. It came at me in multiple places. It came at me from the Bob Proctor organization and the secret. It came at me in India from my, my teacher out in India. It came at me so much to where you've got to jump in on this. And by the way, everybody, we all know consciousness, energy, vibration, frequency. That's what I'm all about. No identity. But at the same time, we're unique. We're in these bodies. We're in these avatars. We are unique. We have differences. So we don't work the same way. But both need to be recognized. You need to recognize you're beyond the body and that your consciousness and your attention and your energy is what manifests your life and understand your individual self. So back then, I jumped into human design and went very far and deep with it into corporate structures. We worked with 80 employees at a time on their designs back years ago. But I ran into a block in 2018, fully recognizing that that astrology is a lie. It's not even a little bit off. It's not true at all. So the 12 signs of the 30 degrees is not accurate to the real sky. So I actually stepped away from human design for a few years and moved into learning from true sidereal astrologists, because again, the universe threw that at me. You have to see this learn from that. I don't intellectually learn at all. Trust me, I'm not an astrology master at all. But I could intuitively and see the big picture was shown this is the truth. So then I decided in the quantum world to go down and say, well, listen, I could manifest myself to be brought to the human design that's using the truth. I didn't know if it existed or not. I just knew that I could manifest myself to be there or maybe play a role. I didn't realize that it was going to come to me where Richard was going to come to me and then we were going to end up co-creating it naturally. And then in 2020, ironically, that year is when it came together. We brought it out. I just want to let people know out there. I still and Greg knows this because I was pausing on our design expression for a while. I still spent time on it, making sure with the math, making sure with people that are close in my life, looking at myself, really truthfully and how it was implementing and it was clear slam dunk that's the answer so then we started to share it more on rise tv when no one else was because no one else knew about it millions of people are following human design in this world many many people is very popular and they are all seeing a false self they will not like hearing that many of them don't like hearing what i have to say with that but trust me you are <laughs> And thankfully, though, in the sharing of it, we came by design, as Greg knows, Greg connected with Emily, and then we brought, brought in with School of Ohm, and we were doing the Rise TV talks. I did a little bit with Emily on Cosmic Human Design, but not much until last year. And then last year, uh, I did a few talks with Emily, and then the next thing you know, long story short, now it's like spreading through all of QSI. But I want QSI to know, just like our Rise audience, that you basically are all the people in this world that are aware of it. There's a few thousand others, maybe, but not many. 
And I feel we're first. We're, we're first for a lot of reasons. We have to venture through it first. We have to discover things first. We have to update and make things better and better and more pure, more relevant, more true. And that's where we are. And I believe that my life's work, in a sense, and Greg's interest as well in cosmic human design and in bringing it out to the team, the team of the family of light, led us to QSI because that's the frequency matching and that's the frequency ready. And that's the frequency of people ahead of time to be ready to dive into themselves and to not just look at what the world's going to do for me out here, but they're going to look at their inner world, their interstellar world of what they can do to be better manifestors, better beings, more passion, more purpose, and be it more efficient. So that was my sum up that I just wanted to throw in. I know it took a little time, but I know some of us are new and some of us aren't. But it's really important to me that you realize that, you know, it's almost like we're in our own universe in this world. You know, we're in the same world as many, but we operate in a different universe. And in the universe of Rise and QSI, there's only, we're basically 90% of the people that even are aware of cosmic human design and utilizing it. And I think it's for good reason. So it's something I just throw out there as a, an, another gratitude place, but also for you to be as neutral and objective as you can, as you explore it. And you make your own decisions, but don't jump to conclusions one way or the other. Try it out for you. Implement it for you and see what happens, because that's the only way that you're going to know. And that's the only way that you're going to see the benefit. Love it. You guys don't mind, Greg. I'm going to pull a Jaren since we're the same profile and I'm <laughs> basically Jaren, but with long hair. The reason why, well, many, many reasons why, but one of the reasons why QSI and Rise get along so well is because we're doing the same thing. We just bring the truth, the truth of the cosmos, no matter who grumbles at us or not, because the truth is a truth. It doesn't need to be defended. And so what the other groups are doing is they're pushing out disinformation or potentially misinformation. But where does that source come from? Incorrect information typically 99% of the time stems from the cabal. They don't want you to know your true strength and your true powers because that's how they suppress you. And that's the reason why it's even more important that when you recognize the truth, you push forward and you pursue it at all costs. Yeah, I love it, Emily. And I'll, I'll get back to you in just a second. I just want to say hi to the chat board. We have a lot of people on here. Uh, our, our favorite, Jess369, she's amazing. Uh, we have Christine, and we have Ozark, we have Amy, Agents of Aquarius, Age of Aquarius, Jim Randall, I love that guy, Monica, um, George, White Knight, Seawolf, Patrick, Jennifer, yeah, uh, Jennifer's in the house, Matthew, Shannon, that's an old saying, Shannon, Tracy, uh, and many, many others, thank you all for joining us, we appreciate it. I will try to get to some of your comments and stuff. If you have some questions, I'll try to look. I don't have uh, Victoria with me today, so I'll do the best I can while other people are speaking to, to check out the chat boards. I may have a question for you later for you guys to answer that we didn't get to on the School of Ohm. So that might be a fun little activity for the audience and us. Uh, so when we talk about design, we're going to break down um, designs here on the show. So we're going to show you charts of each person on the show here and uh, kind of go through them a little bit just to get a little feel for what this all is and what it means. Um, so if you're confused, um, if you get your uh, uh, design from CosmicHumanDesign.com, you go there, it's free. You just plug in your information. You put your UTC time in for your birth time, not your East Coast or whatever. It's got to be UTC time. Then you'll get this chart and it'll show you. Um, on that chart, we'll break down a bunch of things. Now, you can refer to human design stuff at that point. You can go there and you can say, okay, uh, Cosmic Human Design tells me I'm a 1-3 projector splenic. I can go there and I can use that information. I can, I can look through it. I can get an idea of who I am, right? But there's a lot of other things on that chart that are going to be like, whoa, there's a lot of information here which is great, but it's also a lot of data that you have to understand. And so then, you know, like people like Jaron, who you can go to and you can be coached by, um, can really break you down and really show you who you are on detailed levels. So there's a lot that goes into this stuff. But 
to just get the power pyramid part, right? You know, your projector, splenic, one, three, your power pyramid. You get to know a lot of information about yourself. For me, I'm an explorer. I, I get make decisions like that. I know it immediately what my decision is. Some people take a week to make a decision if they're doing it correctly. Some people take a month to make a decision if they're doing it correctly. Now, I'm talking about big decisions. I'm talking about something like what to eat for lunch. But um, in that, you start to understand yourself, your rhythms, your, your all these type of things. Uh, Emily, why, do you, why were you attracted to cosmic human design or human design in general? Um, why are you attracted to it? What, is it? what does it do for you, you feel? Oh, that's, it's kind of a bigger question than it really sounds like, because I think like most people, I had looked at different kinds of astrologies from your typical Western one to your typical Chinese one. And I can see similarities with my personality, with whatever I'm reading, but then it's always like, yeah, but I can also see myself in this one and this one and this one. And so you just default and say, well, that's just the year or the month or the day that I'm born. And you leave it as that. It's a, it's a fun play thing. And when I met you guys, and especially Jaren started talking about my cosmic human design, and we started going into detail about it, suddenly my light bulb went off and was like, holy moly, this helps me answer so many things about myself, but also reconfirms why I've made the decisions that I've made in my life. So it helps me understand where I've come from and also where I'm going to, which again, we will be revealing way more of that on today's call. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, Ree, can I ask you a question about cosmic human design? Um, how much have you dove into it and, and what are you finding out about, about uh, your design? So before I met with Jaren, I did a lot of research in advance before we had our sessions. And I found so much information regarding cosmic human design online. And then afterwards, um, when I met with him, I just started to get really obsessed with it. And just because it was so accurate, everything about cosmic human design was so accurate about me that I just was saying, this is the way that it should be. Um, a lot of organizations should start using this mm -hmm. because it really um, identifies people's strengths and their weaknesses. And I think that this is what's going to change the world too. Yeah, absolutely. And Nicole, um, what's been your experience with uh, Cosmic Human Design and, and how have you felt about it? Um, similar to Re, it was extremely accurate. Um, when I had my first session with Jaren and we started going over it, it was like aha moments of, oh, wow, this is why I did this even early on, you know, even in childhood. This is why I do certain things. And then once we found out and me and Ree started talking about our design, it's like, oh shit, you know, this is why me and Ree work so well together naturally. We were naturally drawn together. Um, and it was based on the cosmic human design, which everyone will see. And again, it will all make sense once we actually bring it to the forefront and Jaren goes over it. But it's just, it was wild how it gave me goosebumps the first time that Jaren started talking with my first gate and, and I was just like, Oh, it, it made complete sense. And I'm like, this is spot on. This is me. This is who I am. So. Yeah. yeah and I, and I Nicole, it. Nicole, how, like, um, how important is it for someone to understand themselves? Like what does that do for somebody when they can understand how they work? Um, you can tap into your superpowers. So once you, clearly understand who you are to the core now you can then understand your superpowers that you have naturally right because you have that understanding when it's all suppressed and you don't know who you are you can know what you can't utilize what you what you truly are so for me it unlocked I knew that I had certain gifts but this really unlocked it all and a lot of manifestations started happening especially utilizing the, the books and the tools that Jaren um, gives, then things just start manifesting and, and, you know, source the universe kind of just speaks to you and just makes it happen. That's great. And uh, Re, um, what have you noticed that you've done a little differently since you've learned your design? Has anything changed? Well, once I found out my design, I 
actually started using it to my fullest potential. Now, some of them I still don't recognize. And like Jaren said, eventually I'll start recognizing these potentials and we'll start using them. But um, all, in all essence, just like what Nicole said, um, we're using it every day and we know that it's how accurate it is. And so it's pretty much, we know who we are and it just makes us much more um, confident about ourselves with the strengths that we have. Mm. Uh, Jaren, well, we got, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Add to that real quick, um, because one thing that Ari said earlier really picked up with me when she said, you know, we know our strengths and we know our weaknesses. And one thing that I learned from you guys from a prior call that you did with Richard was talking about your gates and finding basically your, your match, right? Your pair. And so if you've never seen the cosmic human design chart, you have these lines and every line is broken into two different segments. So you might not have both sides. You might just have one of those sides. And so to find that, that matching pair to your channel is like when you say you meet your soulmate and you say, that's my better half. That's how it feels with this kind of cosmic human design, because where you're weak or where you're missing some information, you can find somebody with either that missing half or maybe that whole link that you need to complete you. So if I go back to what Reba was saying about an organization, that's been game changing for QSI, because now we know this is what the three of us or the 10 of us have, but who has the other missing channels? And when we bring those people onto the team, which is why we're always looking for those people, we're always asking people to go and fill out their profile. That's how we know who to start pairing our teams together with. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that uh, when we did our I Am Limitless event during the workshop, uh, Alexander spoke up and he said that, uh, he uses his advisors as projectors. So he looks for projectors to be his advisors. So there's certain aspects that certain designs have that you want them in certain roles on your team or your company, or even in your friendships and relationships. There's certain things that uh, you may be, like you said, uh, a little bit lacking in or not as uh, passionate about that that person's super passionate about. It's easy, it comes easy to them. So you can put people in roles where things come easy to them. They feel like they're just being themselves where somebody else in a company that has never seen their design and, and is never understood is put in a role where they are, feel like they're constantly swimming upstream. So they're in a role where they just feel like they're failing, that every day is a tough day where, hey, put the right person in that position. All of a sudden, everybody's swimming downstream and then you really can start advancing in the world as a team. So it's amazing stuff what can happen. Uh, Jaren, I have an audience question for you. Uh, they said, does, if I can find it quick, the chat board's going very quickly. Does your birth location affect your cosmic human design? Well, that's, that's how you adjust it to UTC time. So Greg was good about mentioning that to people at the beginning here is that Wherever your local birth time is, you need to adjust it to UTC. So, for example, you know, now in the East, well, we just changed today. So, in the East mm -hmm. Coast today, we advance four hours for UTC time. So, whatever your birth time was, if you were born on the East Coast, that's an example. Mm -hmm. So, that takes into account space pretty precisely. Yes, we could get real detailed for those nerds out there that are saying, well, wait a minute. What if I live 10 miles west from someone else and I was born and all that? Yeah, eventually someday maybe those things will get brought out, but it's not going to change any of the major any parts really to your chart. So if, once you know your your local time, you just adjust it to UTC. UTC time is no different than what your birth time, so it's not changing your birthday at all. It's actually just putting it into one spot, one area, and then you locate and you get your coordinates based on that. I wanted to say a few other things. Greg brought up a good point. You want to know your your profile, your type, and your authority. That's your food, oxygen, and sleep. You know that's what matters the most. Or water, let's say food, oxygen, and water. Some of us don't need to sleep like Emily, but <laughs> that's 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 the that's your prime aspect. So you do want to check that out, and that is literally the truth. If you learn even those parts and you start to implement those parts, that allows the rest of your design to flourish. So I just wanted to say that quick. 
Then the next thing is Emily's bringing up a more advanced element, which is something that I wanted to talk about at some point today. But I will say it is incredible, the connecting gates with one another. And I first discovered this fully without me wanting to. I was realizing after the fact of my connection point with both Richard in the co-creation of Cosmic Human Design, where basically my life's work to bring justice was pressuring a new beginning. Richard, in his genius, was designed to create the new beginning from what I pressured him and gave him the resources of. And Mr. Greg here on screen has the same gate of our connection point for him creating the beginning and the production of what Rise is, another element of my life's work energy. Now, I'll conclude and just say, that's where we're going to take it in the expression on Rise, as well as in the QSI uh, enterprise and all the quorums is causing people to investigate the closest people that you spend time with, that you're working on projects with, that you interrelate with, that you resonate with on understanding the basics of them, their strategy type and profile, but also where you have connection points. And as we go along, looking at the parts that matter the most, that you can look at your connection points to see who does this, who does this, what do we create? And naturally, the enzyme of, of quantum man manifestation that is created by each person playing their part, being their true self and what that engages. Yeah, great stuff there, Jaren. I was just setting up uh, Emily's chart. If you want to uh, go through a chart right now, what do you think? All right, let's look at Emily real quick. We've done many videos with Emily, which is cool. I just want to do the quick highlight like I did with the other two ladies, because for those that have not heard, you'll find it appropriate. That that now we can take a look at it, uh, Greg. If you could scroll up into the top left, top left. Yep, the, Emily's design Earth is a one point two. So the purpose is the design Earth spot that I mentioned with the other two ladies, and Emily's is cosmic consciousness or quantum consciousness. So you might find that interesting that her purpose is quantum consciousness. And then when you look on her personality sun side, so the top right, Greg, Emily has a 33.6. Now the life's work here, I'm sorry, the life's work, what she's here to bring about and cause is all about the star, stellar, the great revelation. And there's more things that I could say about it in revealing. But think about that, having a purpose of quantum consciousness and a life's work of the revelation of learning of the star, of our inner star, and radiating the cosmos, which is when you look under Design Sun, she's a 2.2. So the left side, top left, Greg, the Design Sun is a 2.2. And that is what she's here to radiate, which is the cosmos, nature. So she's radiating as she's realizing. She's radiating as she's being revealed the truth. She's radiating cosmic consciousness with the sensitivity to care for a group, which is what her personality earth is. For those of you saying, what is Jaren doing? He's bouncing around. The point isn't to intellectually understand it. The point is to vibrationally resonate or uh, feel into what I'm saying here. So she's bringing out the revelation through quantum consciousness, radiating the cosmos, which means the reflection of what's occurring as it's happening and designed to be independent yet sensitive for the people she resonates and cares for. And that's a simple example of what we start to look at. Now, the other things you can see on the chart, for those new, this is good. Uh, let, oh, let me interrupt no, you just sorry. for a second, Jared. Yep. Um, I just wanted to say to everybody uh, out there, uh, I don't know if Telegram, uh, there was a question about Telegram being up or down. So I don't know if you want to check that out, anybody. Um, so this is Emily's chart. Some people were asking. This is Emily's chart. Um, we are seeing her basically naked right now. This is her energy, right? <laughs> and um, we will explain a little bit more of, of kind of if you're not familiar with what this looks like, why it's charted like this. Uh, we'll explain a little bit more of the fundamentals. But Jaren's just going over some of the things there that he does as a coach. And, uh, and in the sun and the earth uh, on, on one side and the other. So he's just kind of going over things here for you quickly. All right, go ahead, Jaren. Yeah, and I don't want to talk too much either, but there's a few parts here that are important. So we have the opportunity, so we're bringing it to people. So 
Let's finish there and say, everyone, look at your personality, sun and earth, and look at your design, sun and earth. So when you get your charts, that's where you start to go, okay? Your personality, sun, is your mission. Your personality, earth, is what you're here to learn and embody and transform the challenge. Your design, sun, is what you radiate. It's what lights you up, and it's what increases your vital energy, your chi energy, your health, your vibrancy. And then your design earth is your purpose of who you are to be authentic and elevate and raise yourself in being more authentic. It's your core stability. And you cannot do in your mission what you came to do if you don't be who you are, right? Makes sense. Now we're pointing these out because these are worth like half of your energy. You have many other things. If you picture a circle, you'd have many other genes and DNA in between. But your north, south, east, and west of your circle, think of your pillars, your even cross, north, south, east, and west, where everything goes back to, like a little diamond in the circle, is those four. So we encourage people, and I'm now like pushing that more freely on the internet, right? Saying, hey, go here. Those are the four genes you want to investigate. The last thing here to go to for now, on the basics which is what we really want to get people to learn in your basics has to do with what we've been talking about, where it shows type, authority, and profile. See, for Emily, her type is a generator, her authority is a sacral, and her profile is 6'2". These are what you want to look at also. You start there, okay? Then you move into the prime gifts of what I just expressed with your suns and earths. And if you start there, and there's more, it assists you on a path. If you never look and get help from anyone and you're doing research on your own, I just wanted to share that and just say, hey, now I know what to do. I don't look at every number and color. I don't want to be told what my future is going to be. I'm actually literally looking at how do I live in the moment? How can I improve myself to live from a higher frequency? This is the energy behind your DNA. And how do I interface with the field? No one else interfaces like I do. So how am I designed to be natural? And through quantum mechanics, like literally listening to my body and my feeling, how do I engage with life so that it will kind of co-create with me to build the reality, the dream, the vision, the purpose that I wish to have? Yeah. And once again, cosmichumandesign.com for your free chart. So go there, adjust your UTC time. Um, I believe there is something there that will adjust it for you. But if not, um, on our website, uh, risemediatv.com slash CHD, which is Cosmic Human Design mm -hmm. CHD, it has a, a converter there too for you for UTC time. So if you need to do that. Now, for me specifically, I was born at 8 p.m., 8 something p.m. Uh, on, so when I adjusted it, it went four hours forward for East Coast to UTC. So I was past midnight. Because of that, I switched to, from October 29th or 28th to October 29th. So my actual chart is the day after where I thought I was born. So October 29th. So you have to adjust that for the next day. That can happen. Those things can happen. If you're born in the PMs, um, you could be adjusted to the next day. So just be weary of that. Yeah. Mm. And many of you in Australia have to go back a day. Mm. And that's so that's common. And it's not changing your birthday. We get those questions all the time. It's not. But in UTC time, you're actually born on a different day. So if yeah. you go forward a day or backwards a day, you do plug in the time and the next day. And that's how you make sure you get the truth. Because if you don't change the day, you're going to get a different chart for sure. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so that was Emily right there. We, we took a look at her energy zones. Um, when we look at, uh, let's bring up mine real quick, uh, Jared, because I just want to want to show some people what goes on here. So this is my chart. Now I have a lot of white in here and only two colored. What does that mean, Jared? Well, it means you're very different than Re. Haha, <laughs> as a joke. re has got all hers defined. Um, Greg is receptive in a lot of areas. So where you're white is where you're receptive. So you're seeing the nine centers there, all those diamonds and triangles and squares. Those are your major portals, chakras. There's not seven, there's nine. Think of it, 369, Tesla, 369, nine, the number of divinity. 
The ascending human has nine major centers that have different meanings. Then you have 64 different characteristics that all humans experience, but of traits and qualities that we get to be while we're human. Okay, that's of organic nature in this realm. So that's where the I Ching comes in. For those of us, the I Ching, the I Ching, some of us pronounce it different ways. It's all coming back to 64 different characteristics. Those are what all the numbers are on the chart. And when you look at Greg's, you'll see that many of his little numbers and many of his major centers, they're white. White means receptive. It means you're experiencing it through other people or certain time frames of the year. But more importantly, who am I being conditioned by? You're absorbing that energy. You're reflecting that energy. You're amplifying that energy. And that's just in simplicity. But then on Greg's other element, you can see his colors from the bottom to the left. You can see that those two are defined. They're colored. Okay, that's pressure to act in the now. And Greg's on there. That's what he counts on. In fact, for him, that's what he lives on. So he's in pressure to be instinctual in the now, be in motion, be in action. Okay, and that's what's coming from him through and conditioning other people. So all these places that were colored is where we're bringing it to other people. When it comes to the little gates, okay, you'll see the little black and red lines just for all of you to be aware. Where you're colored means that's where you have an activated DNA spot. If it's red, that means it's design or it's your avatar because I'm we're using words so that you recognize your design side means your avatar. OK, you came in, even if you believe or realize at this point, you've had many life experiences, many lifetimes, you're in a unique avatar this time. And that's what human design, cosmic human design is bringing us, not just your personality, but your avatar. How does my body thrive? So the red is the design and the black is your personality. So that's what you're looking at is if I'm white, I'm receptive. If I'm colored, am I red or black when it comes to those little gate spots? And think about it being called a gate. It's a gateway, right? And what Emily was talking about earlier is if one connects, like Greg, let's do a simple example and then move on and Jaron will stop talking. But right there, yeah, you see that little 44 gate, everybody? Or that one. Let's go with that one. 48. Greg's got that half. It's in his personality. Okay. But he's receptive to the other one that connects to the throat. See there how it's white. That means he's in a way seeking or trying to pull in someone that has the 16. That 16 could be someone who's also trying to pull in his 48. And then when the 16 and 48 combine, they cause a channel, an electromagnetic circuit of energy, an enzymatic process of manifestation or awareness that is unique to the two of them together that they don't possess alone. And now you have this in a sense, wow, I attracted to my mate here. What do we do? It could be stuck places of joy and love, but it also could be purpose and impact and creating things, you know, all types of things. And that's what you start to explore with your friends. But I would not explore your friends or your coworkers until at least you look into yourself for a little while. A lot of times we jump away, and I think you got to start with you. And I'm done talking. We're going to let everybody else talk for a while. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get to Nicole first. Um, Nicole, you have a lot of um, uh, uh, pull towards Wonder Woman, right? And you have your avatar as Wonder Woman. Um, why Wonder Woman? What What is your... Uh, what is your draw to like a superhero like Wonder Woman? It's just a fictional character that I'm drawn to. It it signifies strength. It signifies that warrior side, um, the one that can go out and you know have that shield up at all times. So that's why I'm naturally drawn. I don't kind of look into the back end of it. You know, you hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, that's a man or the cabal or whatever." I don't identify with the actual person right? It's just, uh, it's a imaginary superhero that, that does all. It's that one-stop shop, which I feel that that's how I identify. Now, I think it's great that you are into the superhero um, avatars because I, I believe that we all have very unique superhero type strength inside of us in different ways, unique ways. And uh, it's great that you can see that in yourself and, and try to bring that out 
have you seen your design help you at all with with unlocking those superpowers? Absolutely. Um, it's once you learn about it, you can kind of hone into it and and sit in and then really be and it makes sense. So one of them, as I'm sure Jaron will explain, is I can sense the frequency in QSI specifically. We're just stick to that. The frequency is shifting in the chat, right? So then I can pinpoint where that frequency is. And then I go in and I make one statement and then it will kind of change that frequency. So I did that prior to realizing the cosmic human design. Once I realized and he, and he let me know that that's kind of one of my gifts, then I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. That's why I feel the shift. And I do go in and people will see. I don't always comment every day. But if I feel that shift, whether it's positive or negative, I go in, I make the statement and it kind of neutralizes the environment. And then we can, or if it's a cockroach, right, then I'm going to amp it up. I'm going to make sure that that person is exposed and I'll keep on until we, we they either leave or we ban them. So it, it can go either way. But yes, when there's a shift, that's kind of one of the big things. And I do it in real life as well. Um, I can sense a frequency of someone within seconds of being around them. I'm like, yeah, it's either a positive or negative. And so then I reflect, I, I kind of pull back when it's a negative. And if it's a positive, then I will go in and I will talk and I'll be very friendly. Um, so yeah, that's one of the, the biggest gifts and the biggest takeaway. And Nicole, did you notice that when Jaron was teaching you who you are um, and, and seeing this design, that uh, you had big moments of like, oh my God, like I've, I've thought this my whole life or now wonder this doesn't work out or whatever. Have you had those kind of epiphanies? Yes, I did. Specifically talking where I use my intuition a lot. Um, but naturally society tries to suppress that and they tell you that you've got to think with your mind. But when my gut has always, even as a child, has always told me this you know, how to make this decision, go, go within or being out in nature, right? That's kind of another one where I have to be out in nature. I have to refresh in order to, to then hone in in my gifts and, and I can use my intuition that way. Great stuff. Uh, Re, when we look at uh, Jaron breaking down these charts and showing like this amazing way energy works and people work together, do you see like some big picture things here for for the world and and uh, in QSI? Um, most definitely. So a lot of these connections, I mean, I could have something similar to those at, in QSI, and then I I can lack things that somebody else has. So um, all of us will find our strength and our weaknesses, and we'll be able to connect them all together. And that's what we do with our leaders, with our ALT leaders right now. We're having them pull up their cosmic design charts and work together as a team to figure out, okay, what are the strengths and weaknesses of each individual and then start defining their roles. And then that's how you become and you have a cohesive team when you do that. Yeah, great stuff there. Uh, Emily, um... What's your thoughts here on everything that went on here? And uh, you want to summarize a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, maybe you can also pull up their profiles as well. And we'll do Nicole's we'll do first. And We're going to do that after uh, Jaren's manifestation moment. Is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Then maybe I'll just say this as a lead into what their profiles look like. So when you is eventually see Nicole's um, her cosmic human design chart, you'll notice if, well, you might not remember, but if, if you put our side by side, we literally have the same exact gates, or not gates, channels, um, what are the, uh, chakra things, the boxes, <laughs> yes. the boxes are the exact same colors. And, um, and so that's centers. Why I, yeah. Thank you, Darren. So that's why I was saying we're so similar because we have the same channel, uh, same centers. Um, Jaren's and mine are very, very similar. I think we have maybe one center off, but we're both 6'2 profiles. And so that's why we also harmonize so well. But then I don't want to say too much about Re. We'll let that one be the super, super surprise. But when you see Re's chart, you will understand why we call her the super soldier. 
And the one last thing I'll add to read is we always bring it back to stellar. How does this, the cosmos, the stars relate to stellar? And very, very recently in some of our big D classes, we talked about how every single person in QSI who is a QP, a qualified participant, we're all going to become nodes within the stellar ecosystem, meaning we're validators. We can participate in the voting in the future. And so many people in QSI have been nicknaming themselves and then collectively our group as the guardians of stellar, the guardians of you know the galaxy, essentially, right? Because stellar is cosmos, the galaxy. And so if you think about that, in the perspective of Ree's chart, you're gonna see that she connects to everybody and everybody connects to Ree. So every single individual in QSI being a singular node is connecting to her and she's serving almost like a server or literally the matrix or literally the ecosystem. And that's why it makes so much sense to then be delivering this package of QSI formally to Ree in the future. Fantastic. Um, Jaren, we got some questions here about, um, oh, what was it here? Well, it was about, I don't know. Oh, when you don't know your birth time, how does that work? Um, so I know you well, have a little bit of an explanation for that. Yeah. Birth certificate, that doesn't work. Call your hospital that, that you were born in. That doesn't work. Ask your family. If that doesn't work, body test, into it, feel it, right? Then if you still have nothing other than your own guess or intuition, for some of us, we can be very intuitive and find it, right? But if you still don't know, then you have to just plug in different times. That's what I say to do. So plug in three or four times that are different throughout the day from morning to night. Look at the differences. You'll see a few differences. And then from there, you'll know, oh, this is where I am. And this is what I do, but you can do this for yourself. If you plug in a morning and afternoon and an evening time, you'll see the profile will give it away. Profiles do change relatively quickly. In other words, that means you can have multiple profiles in the same day, as well as your moons. So if you look at your moons, the moons move faster. And that could be another way that you can, you can see it. So that's my best thing is, you know, you got to, you got to want to find it. You got to intend to find it. You got to feel it and intuit it. And then you got to trial and error and you'll get it. The, I guarantee that you will be able to get your accurate chart. Yeah, that's great stuff there. Because I think there's a, a handful of people out there that, that don't have their time or whatever happened and they just can't figure it out. And so, yeah, that's a, it's a great way of doing it. Um, you know, throughout the day, you know, 8 a.m., uh, 12 noon, uh, 4 p.m. and then like 8 p.m. and just see what looks right to you, what what feels right to you and, and see if you can figure it out that way. Or you could go to Jaren and Jaren could really help you as well. Um, <laughs> try and, trying to like guesstimate, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Jaren's a little busy, but he'll get around someday. I'm going to schedule it for 2027. How about that? <laughs> just yeah. kidding. All right. Sounds good, everybody. We're going to do Jaren's manifestation moment. And then when we come back, we're going to get into the other two guest charts. Uh, we're going to figure out what Nicole and Rhi look like in their energy. All right, everybody. Enjoy the manifestation moment. For today's manifestation moment, let me tell you all that will see this clip that may have not seen this Cosmic Human Design show with the magnificent Quantum Stellar Initiative team. I definitely recommend that you check it out because Cosmic Human Design is important in our ascension, in our discovery of self, and in our ability to live our dreams. And you also want to know and become connected with Quantum Stellar Initiative if you have not, because you will find your tribe and you will be part of some of the greatest humanitarian projects and the movement this realm has ever seen. So this is an important show. And for this segment, I'm going to make it short. It's not going to be about human design per se, 
and just talk about what came to me. I think it was on Tuesday night. I was going to sleep and once in a while things just happen. And I started to get this phrase of stronger, smarter, sexier, and that that was going to be my segment for today's show. The new way. What is the new human in strength, intelligence, and sexiness? So let's start with strength. Some of the things that I th come to me with what true strength is starts first with you recognizing your true self and you beginning to recognize the ego. And you start to take back control step by step, day by day, your true self. So what does that mean? That means when you see the compulsions coming in, the reactions, the too fast emotional reactions, the autopilot behaviors that you do not want to do, the blaming, the victimhood, all that kind of stuff. We could go, we could do a whole show on those things. You say no. You pause, you breathe, you stop. So one is this discernment within yourself or this um, restraint to where you gain back control from, let's call it a parasitic consciousness that runs people on autopilot. And let's just say keeps you stuck in your loops of your past or living what the external wants for you. So strength comes from being the true you and saying no to the ego. Another one is communicating your authentic self with others when needed. So we have the courage and the faith to express things, to express how we truly feel, to express differences or express challenges and to not avoid things and deny things and accept things of mediocrity or that are not working. So it takes courage and strength to be yourself, to admit when you make mistakes and to move through challenges, you know, not to hold on to guilt, but to be willing to walk through blame and, you know, honor yourself and other other people in the mistake process. Okay. It also takes strength to pick yourself back up after you've made one or to pick yourself back up after you feel like life is against you because not life is not against you. So think about strength in terms of I have courage and faith in life. The cosmos wants to help me. I'm going to start to have an attitude of connection to it, co-creating with it, and knowing that it wants to help me live my dreams. It wants to help me grow in myself. It wants to help me in my purpose. So those are some elements of the new strength. Smart or uh, intelligence here is, number one, we recognize intention is important. Our attention is our prime consciousness. So we start to, using our strength, as said earlier, control where we put our attention with the true self on the things that matter and on the things that we're interested in from the inside out. So whether I'm inside or whether I'm outside, my attention is where I want it to be. Because remember, where attention goes, energy flows, you're going to manifest it. So our attention said that. But intention is key, and most of us still do not realize that power nor use it enough. So the new world, we recognize that how we're really designed to use the mind is to, vi is to set the coordinates for where we wish to go. In other words, what we want to manifest, have the intention that it's going to come to be, vibrate and feel that intention for periods of time, then let it go and know your work, yes, but also the cosmos will build with you and take you towards that destination. So you have to know where your effect, what your effect is. Clarity on what do I really want? Then clarity on I can't get there unless I believe it. I can't get there unless I allow it. I can't get there unless I vibrate at it. Because you do not manifest what you want, you manifest what you vibrate at. So the work is, I'm aligning to my dream. I'm feeling like it's already occurring or it's going to be on its way. I have faith in it. And then I'm going to enjoy the journey there. What helps you on the journey there is your cosmic human design. The other element of intelligence would be intuition, which we've talked about so much. And due to time, 
We get it, but how important is it? It's very important. That's your education from within. That's your quantum choice holistically, also within your learning and your cosmic human design helps you on that. And then sexy, which we all find fun. Well, your cosmic human design is going to help you be you, fully embrace you, because the new sexy is authenticity. The new sexy is being willing to be you regardless of what anyone else thinks, which takes strength. Yes, you have compassion. Yes, you own up to your mistakes. Yes, you do the best you can. But inevitably, the only one that cares at the end of the day, and think of all the times when you're on your own and no one's around you, is you. No one else exists. It's just you. So you'll have people that view you as amazing or a sage. No, don't get carried away. You'll have people that view you as a bad guy and a villain. Believe me, I have both. It doesn't matter. I'm more neutral. I'm doing the best I can, but I'm willing to be me. And the sexy is when you're willing to be you regardless. And you're humble in the process of your growth. But at the same time, you have this confidence in who you are regardless. And you're willing to boldly walk your hero's journey and be that unique, sexy you. No one else is you. The whole point of cosmic human design is it's the science of differentiation. No one is born as you. You are unique and you have unique gifts, unique talents, unique abilities of which you're here to bring about, especially at this time. And authenticity, being real and being intimate with life is very important. So you're intimate with your life. You're intimate with yourself. You're real. And as you are real and walking your path authentically, all your dreams will come true. All your mission will come true. All your relationships and your health and your wealth will all be part of that. You being authentic, authentically of integrity in who you are. So that's just a little bit of the new smart, strong, and sexy. Right. Thank you, Jerry. And there's your S3. Strong, smart, sexy. Sounds good. Sounds like a good way to walk through life and to start your day feeling good. Um, I know that <clears throat> when we are we're doing the I Am Limitless uh, uh, tour in Tampa, we were out with some friends um, afterwards. And, um, and the one guy said that me and Victoria were a sexy couple. And I was like, wow, all right. Feels good. I'll take that. <laughs> That's not a bad word, um, but uh, yeah, I love it, Jaren. Um, you know, being your authentic self, so, so important. Um, that's the same with, with this design stuff as well. Um, you may think you're acting in design sometimes, but you have to be very careful. That ego uh, very easily creeps in and does a lot of things. So um, you have to really, you know, find that internal compass and that internal voice to guide you and then you'll naturally fall into your design. It shouldn't be forced. Um, there's obviously strategies to your design, but it shouldn't be forced. This is who you truly are. So if you're forcing things to happen, then you are not in that alignment with self. Alignment is so, so important. We hear it in law of attraction all the time. Alignment, right? Um, so manifestation, all of those magical things of life uh, happen in alignment. So we have to really find ourselves to get, uh, to get that alignment going. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about quickly, uh, just a little fluff uh, subject here with alignment. Um, Nicole, talk to us a little bit about um, your own life, how you create magic in your own life. How do you find alignment in your life? Uh, it's a, that's a tough one because it doesn't always work, right? I mean, we're human. Um, but the best way for me to do it is, is to be outside meditating. Um, I have to be in the sun. I have to be in nature. I have to be, now that I'm in Florida, I can be on the beach, which is my happy place. Um, so when I do those things, it, it helps me be more in alignment. Um, if I'm not doing those things, then I'm completely out of alignment because I have to have, have to have me time. I, I can't just go, go, go. And again, you'll see it in the, 
the human design, whereas Re can go, go, go. So specifically speaking as a team, she'll send me a, a, bil a bazillion tasks to do <laughs> and she'll hit me hard. And I'm like, wait, but she knows that I just have to have me time. I need to take time for myself. I need to go outside, give me 30 minutes to an hour and, and my whole world will be back in alignment. And then I can come back and do the task. Um, so that's how I stay in alignment. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, I know with, uh, you know, a married couple, me and my wife, you know, Victoria is a manifesting generator. She likes to sprint. She likes to multitask. She likes to give me a lot of things. And I'm a projector. I'm much different, much different designed. I need my away time. I need my alone time. I need my decompression time. I'm a sucker for the beach and nature and uh, the sun. All of those things re regenerate me. I'm be able to became, become creative. Um, but I also work a little bit on adrenaline. So adrenaline helps me as well. So, um, but I have to be careful. I have to set boundaries. That's a very important word for life. Boundaries, even with your own spouse. Boundaries, this is how I work. This is what I need. If I am here, we'll be a happy couple. But if I'm not, we're going to have a lot of issues, a lot of rocky things. So we have to be very weary of those things, our designs, and who we're around all the time. Um, so it's a very interesting dynamic. Uh, Re, let's talk a little bit about uh, alignment. I mean, I know you're a super soldier, but uh, how do you find alignment? How do you make sure that you're into your design and that you are operating at your most highest potential? So... Of course, I'm a super soldier, but I also do need sleep. And um, I do get a couple of hours of sleep. But also, one thing that I learned from Jaron doing his sessions was to get away from my computer and be able to just take time for myself. And that was one of the things that was really hard for me to do was because I'm always on the laptop. I'm always on the computer. I'm always... And when I, even when I'm journaling, I'm journaling on the on the laptop and I'm typing all the time. So one of the things that I've been doing often is to just get away at least for an hour or go for a walk, um, even, even try to meditate. Um, what I told him before is when I used to wake up, I used to just grab the phone and just look at the phone immediately. So with that, now that I've learned is I don't grab the phone right away. And um, I just take time to myself and meditate for a little bit and then start grabbing the phone and then do what I need to do. But that's that's how I just get my mind straight and be able to focus because one of my strengths is I am focused all the time. So, Yeah, we met one of those focused guys in Tampa uh, in person. And oh my goodness, <laughs> he was intense. He Yeah, he focused and we did this uh, I did. I put on this uh, little workshop where I put on some really fun music, and I said everybody freeze in the room. Nobody's allowed to dance. The last person to not dance wins. So during that period of time, a bunch of people broke and they just started dancing. And they danced around everybody else who was standing still, and that focus guy was just mm, like he just stood there with his big wide eyes, and I was like, wow, this guy is intense, but. Yeah, that focus uh, certainly gets you in trouble at times because you have to give yourself permission to re relax, permission to go over here and do a little me thing, right? A little unwind. And so I think a lot of times in life, we have to hear somebody like a coach give us permission to do certain things. Oh, yeah, I probably should do that, right? So... I, I, I do that a lot with people in my life, people I, I co-workers, different people that are around, is I ask them questions. Questions are very, very important to human beings. They want to know more about themselves through questions. So if you can ask them questions, they start to unlock a bunch of things that they didn't realize about themselves. And so the one person had been trying to get to the gym for a very long time, it talks about it all the time, never gets there. So I just asked her more questions about it. And I asked her why and, and availability and things and this. And I just kept on trying to unwind her. And then I said, you know what? I think you should pick a day. Let's pick a day. So she picked a day. And I said, that's going to be your day. And no matter what, you're going to go there. 
And uh, I said, and she said, well, I'll stop home first. I said, nope, put a bag in your car, put your stuff in it, and it's always there. Anytime that you're going to come up with an excuse if you go home. So we're going to have that bag in your car. And so I, I, I kind of gave her permission in a way of talking through it to get her to allow herself to get past the excuses, past the roadblocks, past the talking about it, and actually doing it, and she did it. She went. And so I was very proud of her because it was something that was year, two years, five years of talking about it. She finally did it. And it's sometimes it's the person in your life that gives you permission to do something that makes a huge difference. Um, so, uh, Emily, you want to talk a little bit about uh, alignment? Oh, boy. Um, I'll, I'll keep this one short again because it'll all just tie together beautifully at the end of this call. But when, especially when Jaron was going over his manifestation moment, he talked about how if you start aligning with your dream, then you have to have the faith that it's happening and the belief that it's already here. And that is the single most important thing that I can help people understand. And I think that's the, the entire reason why these calls exist, because we're trying to teach people that when you're in that moment and you have that belief that you have that conviction, then basically between your your dreams, you know, your, your lucid dreaming, it is a reality, but you have to take the steps to make it become a reality. And as you're taking those steps, the universe meets you from the other end and it just it starts to exist. It exists in the plane that you, let's say your eyeballs live in now. <laughs> that way you don't think it's a dream anymore. You know it's reality, right? Because you're merging the two planes together. And so that's why it's so, so important to walk your path in authenticity because too many people have been suppressed, like everybody said on the call, right? We've been suppressed by the cabal. So we think we should act a certain way to fit in with society, but it's because you're trying to fit in that you don't actually fit in. So the way that you truly fit in is just to be yourself and don't care about what other people think because then you start walking the correct, the right, the cosmic path that you're meant to walk on. And that's when you find the true reality for you. Love it, Emily. And uh, it brings up a really important thing that in this design system, you feel seen, you feel heard. You feel like, whoa, I actually align with what is going on here, where maybe a lot of your life, you've never felt that. You've never felt seen. You never felt heard. And when you get around these type of groups, when you get around people who see you for your design, for your authenticity, for your alignment, or they even put you in alignment just being around them, boy, does that make a difference in your life and you feel so good. Uh, Jaren, there was a question. Military time, right? This is how we enter in for uh, for PM and stuff like that. Would it be military time? So eight o'clock twenty. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to type in PM or AM. It's military. So some of us are remembering or relearning what that means. So, like Greg said, <laughs> two PM would just simply be fourteen, right? Twelve plus two. Two AM is o two. So military time. It's pretty simple once you connect to it a little bit. <laughs> All right, Jaron, before we get to their charts, anything else you want to add in to, for the for the group uh, discussion? I don't think so. Okay. All right, so whose chart do you want to pull up next there, Jaron? Surprise us. All right, let me see here. What Nicole. Nicole's. There you go. Here. Nicole's. Right. We'll save Ree for last. Okay, <laughs> let's save Ree for last. Let me just find Nicole. There she is. Okay. All right, everybody, get ready to see Nicole. <laughs> there she is. All right, Jaron, go ahead. Yeah, we'll just look a little bit at Nicole's. I mean, we said some of her prime gifts at the top, her sons and earths, I already did that. But when we look at the basics here, the foundation of Nicole, we can see she's a generator, she's a sacral, and she's a 5-1. So let's talk a little bit about generators just for a moment, because many of you are. So 37% of you out there are a generator. I call that a pure generator. And 33% of you are a manifesting generator, which is a hybrid, but you have the generator quality first. I am one of those. So add that up, seven out of 10 of you are a generator quality, at least 
in its simplicity at first, right? So the generator responds to life. That's what you're designed to do. Not force, not manipulate, but pull things to you. Vibrate at it, be inspired, move in the direction. And as you're moving in the direction, in your inspiration or in what is meaningful to you, what has purpose, what is worth it, you'll pull things to you. So Nicole is a generator. Then what she does is she responds to life. In her case, responding to life comes from the gut. So her authority is sacral. 35% of you have sacral as a prime authority. Many of you have an emotional authority, but you're also a generator, a manifesting generator. So you still have this too, relatively. So many of us have this gut knowing that we can't force, but occurs. And we learn to listen to our gut. So we don't just pull things to us, have all these stimulations and take every answer. Like I talked before about compulsion. We're not just, you know, being compulsive and just grabbing everything. No, we're only engaging with the things that either feel really good and light us up or in decision making are that yes. Now, Nicole has that purely. She actually has time with nature. That 5 to 15 channel, that black line you see from the red to the green up there, that is timing. She's in time with nature. She's in time with the cosmic timing, and she's very aware of it. And it connects her to her spirit or her true self. Her true self to the gut is connected through rhythm, timing, and nature. Just as a side note. But it, it cues her in her gut, her gut yes or no. The uh-huh is what all of you have that are generators or manifesting generators. And the uh-uh or the tight feeling is the no. That sounds simple and it really is. So what that points to everyone though is if your gut says yes, but your fear says no, or your worry about other things or other people say, don't do it. Don't listen to it. Listen to the gut. At the same time, your wants may say yes, or you may want to say yes because you're fitting in, but your gut says no. Don't do it. So our gut leads us we do not lead by the intellect or the ego anymore right the last thing i'll say about nicole here is aside from the sacral as you can see on the right triangle she's very white there she has one gate gate six but that is the solar plexus which is a huge component in cosmic human design just like the sacral is and hers is the empath mostly emotionally Half the world rides through an emotional wave, but in Nicole's case, no. But what she is designed to do is be empathic to the feeling of others. And she's designed to enjoy feeling the emotions of others and also steer away from those that do not resonate or feel good. So many of us have empath places or conditioning places in different areas, but that's just a simplistic version to say that Nicole's decision making is pretty much I'm in response. Is it yes or no? If it's yes, I choose. If it's yes, I put my energy forward. I'm doing the work. Generators love to do work. So we're hands-on and we're doing the work. But if it's a no and it's not it, I'm not going to do it. Or I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm pushing. I'm pushing. No, I don't feel it anymore. Drop it. What's my gut say to do next? Or what is triggering me next in life to pursue? Then the generator responds. Because what the generator does is build builds, sustains, um, perseveres in, in, in creation and in the expansion of life. And so that's just my best way to be able to sum it up in a few minutes and still teach you all some simplistic areas and then, you know, give Nicole her due of uh, her uniqueness. Hers is actually easy when I look at it. I like when I see someone that's a sacral generator because it's more simplistic to talk about. Now, when we get to Reese. That's great, but it's got a little extra stuff to it. <laughs> <laughs> a little more complicated she is. Uh, Jared, a question for you. Um, these uh, channels that are green and kind of orange and then redder, um, what do those mean different color-wise? Those are centers. Centers. I'm so sorry. we're all learning that. Yeah, no, it's good. So the ninth, it's called a center in human design, but it's you could call it a major chakra or a portal. Okay, centers. If you're colored, that means it's consistent and it's coming from you. If you're white, that means you're receptive. You borrow it for periods of time, utilize it, then it runs away. And you also reflect that back to the others that are conditioning there. 
right? So that's a simplistic way of saying it. The colors, honestly, don't mean anything okay. for what we're going to talk about today. The red and black matter in the lines, the little, we call them lines, but they're actually called gates, right? Those matter more, is it red or black? But the colors of the centers is just pointing out what the centers are. Gotcha. You know, the, 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 bottom, the bottom center is all about adrenaline, good and bad stress. Then we said the sacral above it is the doing, consistent doing. The right triangle is the solar plexus of feeling and emotion. It's a power of manifestation and it's an awareness. The left triangle is instincts. It's your knowing in the now and it's for protection and survival. Then that green, light green spot is your spot of the spirit, the true self, your unique behavior and your direction in life. It's direction. It's not manifestation, but it is of an energy but it is direction and it's called your G center or your identity center. Then next to that is the heart, which is the little heart spot. And that's all about will and value, value and integrity and ambition, right? The ambition to manifest in the material plane. Then you have the throat where everything leads that right there, everything from below and from above in awareness and in energy meets in the throat and we always talk about how sound is the key to all things so even in human design it shows us that the sound and the deed all come from the throat right sound and deed is where all manifestation takes place and you above that you have what's called the ajana which first is vision so we talk about the third eye and having a vision and it's also mental awareness and intelligence and intellect and then above that we have pressure to think and cosmic downloads or uploads or newness that you're bringing in a future timeline that you're trying to process things that you're putting together. And that's my response to just give you a highlight of what the nine centers mean, but the colors don't really mean anything there necessarily. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thanks for going over that. That's uh, good information there for everyone. Uh, picture a, a, a human being sitting over the top of that, right? And, and then that it all fills in your body there. Uh, to an extent and uh, shows you where where you respond from and where you are uh, more in waiting for, for responses from the universe or from the outside world, those type of things. So really interesting stuff there. All right. So that was Nicole. Uh, anything to add, uh, Emily, with Nicole? Um, sure. Yeah. I'm going to pull some notes from things that I took before because I think that's a great summary of Nicole. So old notes that I have taken, which you can't see on the chart without going through the individual numbers, is that Nicole's all about bringing new beginnings. So she's filled by emerging concepts, starting new projects. She's designed to be part of starting something new. So she's an innovator. She's amazing at this continual process of, of a mutation, of shifting through the ebbs and the flows of life or of whatever that project means. And so that's why she is naturally an amazing organic agile coach. Um, she's constantly looking at new projects to innovate, to, to organize, basically just make it better. So she's the kind of person that can take chaos and pull it into change and into innovation and make it amazing. Um, so to kind of sum it up, she is basically designed to be the problem solver. Um, she's designed to be a fixer of situations, right? Chaotic situations. And most importantly, she's amazing at dumbing down very, very complex ideas. In our case, it's complex lessons because we're teaching quantum everything right now. Yeah. And so that's why I might be the one that puts out the information, but Nicole's great at making sure everybody understands the stuff that's coming up in my mouth. Yeah, great stuff there. Uh, I heard a speaker talking um, the other day about uh, if there's an amazing researcher and he's doing just cutting edge innovation, but doesn't know how to explain it to the world, he's losing a whole big part of, of, of what he's doing. He needs to be able to give that to the world somehow in terms that people understand, in a way that people understand, deliver it, you know, in an app form or something. So that's great, uh, Nicole, that you can do that kind of stuff and be able to break down complicated things into simplicity because simplicity ends up being genius when it comes down to it. Uh, Nicole, you want to speak a little bit more on your design? Is there anything you want to add uh, in there that you've, you've learned or felt about yourself? I'll just add to what Emily had said. Um, as most people, 
probably don't know, I do a lot of the editing, right? Um, I haven't done any recently, but in the past I have, and I do a lot, um, I did a lot for the ALT instructing whenever we're doing the class. And a lot of people, they try to get a concept where it's it, it, a lot of words, it's very wordy, right? Because they, they don't know how to put it into a clear, concise, to the point um, to, to captivate the audience. Whereas that is one of my gifts where I can, I can dumb it, not really dumb it down, but um, sum it down into a few words where it's more clear, concise, and it will captivate the audience. Um, because I know for me, if it's, if it's really long to read, I bypass it and I keep going. So you've got to really, you know, capture the, the, the audience up front, and then they'll read more into it and they'll, they'll continue and then they'll be engaged. Right? How do you keep them engaged? That's the key. Um, and a lot of times, it's it's being able to relate to them. You know, putting in the information that they can relate personally. Um, we can put logic down all day long, but how can you get them to relate to it and keep them focused in? Great stuff. Yeah, I, I I'm glad you guys brought that up because Nicole's got this built in her DNA in her, you know, we talked about certain areas like her mission or her purpose. And there's other areas of which she's able to communicate complex subjects in ways that people can understand. But her profile, as Emily brought up a little of, of five one, I told you all you want to know your profile, is the fixer. It's the solver. Her 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 challenge and gift is which problems do I solve? Mm. And when do I have the energy to do so? And when is it right? But if it is right and you come to her, she's designed to do that. But my point is here also is the the personality element of her in her profile is also designed to be able to uh, cut out the, the um, division or where two people would see things differently and find a middle ground and be an easy communicator that makes everybody understand. It makes everybody get it, even if it's a new, innovative way. Wow, here it is. I get it. And that's what the heretic does. It's actually a powerful voice that causes people to resonate easily from multiple places of point of view to arrive at a common understanding or a common um, plan of action. And I want to piggyback off of that really quickly because Nicole mentioned something called ALT, which is a, a system that the team designed. And it stands for Art of Leadership Training. So we're kind of piggybacking off of the art of war. And if you've never been a part of QSI, and you, or, or you have, but you don't know what ALT is, we're basically creating a leadership factory. And again, that's why we get along so well with RISE, because at the beginning of the call, Greg, you're the one who said, we're here to build leaders. And as we've been saying for all so many years, is we want to be the leadership factory, right? We want to clean out the cabal. And we want to bring in new white hot, you know, quantum future galactic leaders to the world and eventually to the whole universe. So that's why it makes so much sense that somebody like Nicole with her precise profile is leading the charge for ALT. Yeah, great stuff there. And uh, someone uh, said that, Nicole, that's your magic lasso. <laughs> Going back to the Wonder Woman. Uh, great stuff there. Um, anything else to add before we move on to Re, uh, Jaren? Okay. All right, let's bring up uh, the Super Soldier here. We'll take a look at all these colors. Everything's filled in. Uh, what do we got here, Jaren? Well, Re's so filled, we don't. None of us have any opportunity to add anything ourselves. <laughs> she's got it all for us. No, we're just picking on you, Reese. You can see that she's got nine centers to find. All of them are colored. That's pretty rare. You'd have to flip heads nine times in a row, right, everyone? So, but we're all like that. We're all unique. We're all different. Some of you have a mix. Some of you reflectors out there have all white boxes. And I've now met four or five of you, even in QSI, that have all the white boxes. So there is no bad or better here. But she's defined everywhere. So you can see all of her centers are defined. So yes, lots of energy, lots of conviction, lots of motor. However, many that would be nine centered would be a manifesting generator, such as my type. She's got an interesting combination to where she's defined everywhere, but she's also a generator. So you could see her type is generator. So again, that being in response and that following the gut, 
even though she's very perseverant and willful in intention and in motivation, it's not in the aspect of force at all into the external. Um, she's got loaded with channels. So you guys could see she's got at least six or more channels. Um, one of the big ones is the tribal channel, the family channel, interaction, um, growing mm -hmm. an enterprise. Everybody's doing their part. Everybody's being seen. She's got the intuitive channel that's extremely fast, instinctual in the now. So she's designed to function in the now. Um, she's got timing channel that I mentioned with Nicole. They share that where they each have an, a certain sense of timing of when it's right for certain things. Um, and then on the bottom, we'll point that one out. We talked about focus in other ways. Well, she's literally got the channel of focus and concentration. So that nine to 52 that she's very aware of because it's black, right? It's the personality side because it's black. She, that's all about focus and concentration, but it's more so on the body being in the moment and exuding in the moment. It's not only intellect focus, like people think about mind focus, it's body focus, doing focus and focused on one thing at a time. So she's actually designed, sure, to handle a lot of things, but she thrives most when she's engaging fully in one thing without a lot of distraction, honestly. So that's why it's helpful sometimes to put the other things away and not engage with other people if she's trying to work on something for herself or a project because her whole system flourishes off of being focused. Anytime you have a root to sacral uh, channel that if you're not on one thing at a time or you feel like you want to be doing something but you're being pulled somewhere else, you won't feel right because you're actually designed to be you know, focused on that thing before you get into other stimulations. And then you can see Reese, um, a 1-3 profile, which is what Greg is. So a 1-3 profile is the investigator. And I wanted to point this out for everyone. Martyr is a word that will be updated. There is a potential for martyrdom here, but that's not really what it should say. It's explorer wanderer. So consciously her personality profile and how she thrives and views life is she's the investigator. She does research, she studies, she pays attention, she sees what's going on, she digs up things, digs up where things are off, but she's also designed to be introspective as the inv investigator, to take time to pause and feel into the body of what to do next or what she needs to let go of or when she needs a break, which also we talked about earlier and read that's great because she does need that time for that. And part of her challenge in her chart is also recognizing that balance between the amount to be engaged with other people and work or just pressurable going on vacation, having a good time. Back to the profile though, besides the investigator who's got a, you know, approach of, you know, a little bit of logic there too. The design side is the avatar functions by exploring trial and error. You can't know in a book, you can't know through someone else. You have to apply it. You have to experience, you have to live yourself. So what she does like Greg, is, you know, gather things for the root, for the foundation, but through exploring, through going beyond her comfort zone, through breaking pattern. So it's really important for all people that have three profiles, and hers is a one three, especially the one threes, to break patterns sometimes, because you can get so fixated in the, the, into the regular structure, and you block manifestations or realizations that want to come in if you let them go and if you do something new. So breaking pattern, going beyond comfort zone, experiencing through trial and error, being comfortable making mistakes, but then learning quickly through the experience, through the mistake, and bringing it back to the foundation that really is the foundation for all profiles and all people. The one three is the most personal destiny designed to be an innovator and really an inventor. There's certain things that are unique to come out through Re, through Greg themselves that they can't even get from anyone else. There's a process of learning from other people, but you have something uniquely you that you're here to bring out. And it's not selfish. It's actually who you are to focus on self and to want to bring it out in that unique way. Yeah, great stuff um, there, Jaron. And, uh, you know, when I look at myself as a one, three, <clears throat> uh, a lot of times I like to explore things before I bring people places. So like, let's say I'm, I'm thinking about bringing my family to a particular lake or whatever. I like to go and explore the lake first, see the good spots, see where I got to go, experience things and then go and bring them there. Uh, 
you know, so there's just certain things about yourself that you're like, whoa, that's kind of interesting, you know, that I do that and whatever. So um, a trailblazer, I like to think, you know, explore those type of things. Um, try new things in, in technology, try new things in uh, marketing, all those type of things, right? Trying all the time and, and seeing and exploring what, what works and what doesn't for ourselves and, and the public. So pretty interesting there. Uh, Emily, you want to speak on Re a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. So if you guys were paying attention to the profiles, Re and Greg have the same. Jaren and I have the same. And that's why there's so much harmony again, because without even knowing Re is that, or without even knowing about cosmic human design, we were naturally attracted together. So just like how with Rise, Greg's created the platform and then Jaren's come in and he's taught cosmic human design. Even though technically I created the QSI platform, Re's the one who's managing it, well, right, for over a year now, and she'll be the one who overtakes it eventually. And so theoretically, I'm almost borrowing time on her platform at this moment, and I'm doing the teaching on this side. And then if I further draw it out, again, with some of the old notes I was compiling before, so Ree's whole thing is being in response, right? We talked about how she doesn't force situations. She listens, she reacts, she explores. So she explores people, she explores the cosmos, but she she's not forcing things on the universe. She's bringing the universe to her and not just to her but the family the tribe the community so in that sense like you know in in terms of being the explorer she's the investigator she's not the instigator she's the investigator and so one other thing that i already knew about reed but it was reinforced by her cosmic human design is that she has so much integrity that her integrity is not just for her. She demands it on everybody that she works with, everybody in the community. And that's why she's so amazing at holding people accountable to what they say they want to do or be in life. She's like that coach behind us going, hey, this is what you want. This is what you need to do to get there. And on top of that, one of her nicknames in her design profile is she is known as the sovereign one. And so that means she harnesses power for good. So it's the good of the collective. And she does it through herself being sovereign. She's got that steady vision. And then she projects it onto people saying, hey, this is how you can also become sovereign. This is how you can also have, you know, become empowered. And so uh, she's got that quality of being the person to empower other people, just like what Greg does, right? Greg teaches you how to manifest so you can become empowered. And so the last thing I'll say is um, kind of piggybacking off of what Jaren said, Re has the ability to create something big, right? She's an innovator. And so for the moment, she's been learning from me and from other people. You know, what does QSI represent? What do we want for the future? But eventually that's going to become her vision for the world. And that's why, again, it's so powerful because when I turn it over officially to read later this year, that will be the the official manifestation of the future QSI, right? QSI 2.0. And so it's all going to be about originality, about personal personality, about karma, um, and of course, being the the workhorse super soldier that she is, she'll bring the one she'll be the one to bring stability to QSI as well. So it's just such a good combination right there. Love it, Emily. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, somebody had a question, Barb. Uh, she wanted to know how to get her chart uh, herself. So she came a little late to the show. CosmicHumanDesign.com uh, is where you go. And you have to put in UTC time for your birth time. You're going to have to know your birth time, your location, um, and, uh, and you'll be able to get that chart. So uh, the same chart that comes up on the screen, you'll get from CosmicHumanDesign.com for free. Um, right there. So, yeah. Hey, Greg, if I could throw something in, because I know we have your segment and then yep. we have some parts at the end to go to. I want to make sure I talk now for Greg, but for all the projectors out there, we've been very patient. We haven't talked about projectors much. And it's really important that we do because projectors are built so different than the other types. And we really want to acknowledge and appreciate projectors, but also have projectors understand yourself. If you are a projector, patience is key, but it does not mean you're not active, you're not doing the work, 
And it doesn't mean you're not building your platform, building your dream, building your reality. And it also doesn't mean you're not paying attention to the patterns of other people of which you wish to share and help them. So when you see a projector, you're going to see it says to be invited. Your strategy is to be invited. What it actually means is active observation. You're actively observing. You're seeing where you could support. You're designed to be a guide and guide the efficiency of the other types and to see things they don't see in themselves because your aura is naturally going into theirs. So you're like a radar of feeling other people and seeing where you could help them. But until they're ready, until they're available, until they're there, you can't do anything about it. And when you try to push it, it's only going to cause conflict. So you just observe. And then you notice who in my life is inviting me in? Who in my life is recognizing that? And for the rest of our types is to ask them in. It's to open it up. Because when you open up a projector and it's by the right time and it's in the right way, your whole life flourishes. Or you'll see something that you didn't know that you, 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 know, you were blocked in in yourself. So projectors are so important for all the other types and all the other designs, and especially for them to be confident in themselves, to not need to force. You don't need to sell yourself. But no, as you're being you, you'll be brought into the right situations, both to guide a person and support them while they in, uh, acknowledge and harmonize and, and bring you energy, whatever it is that other person could bring, but also to recognize that a lot of the work that you're doing long term, besides success that may be happening now, you'll be brought into the situation where you thrive. You'll eventually get to the place or several times in your life, that you'll be brought right into the situation. So instead of you trying to find it, trying to sell yourself in, forcing yourself in, you just do your thing, boom, the universe will bring it, and then everyone will see you. And you'll get to be the prince or princess in that situation to do what you love to do or to do what your skills are actually designed to do. But when projectors try to force or fit in or be heard is where your challenge is, right? Mm -hmm. So just... Be you, notice who is listening, notice who is asking, notice who's being you know, being of reciprocity, because if you're not being valued and seen for who you are, that's a challenge also for the projector. And move towards people who are seeing you, but just build what you're doing and wait for that time, because it's like you're building a system. It's like a movie. You're the director, and all your character roles are setting up. And you'll be brought in as the director as long as you don't push it and as long as you're confident in yourself and following your own path. And I'm sure Greg has a lot more to say from his self, but I wanted to make sure to do that with our time because I actually, and like we said earlier, Alex, Alexander as well, who some of you in QSI at some point will be aware of, he says the same, that we need to not only honor our projectors, but we're real smart to have projectors as our advisors around us to support us with all this stuff we're trying to manifest and generate so that it's actually on the right path and it doesn't have any holes in it that we're not seeing. Yeah. Um, in reflectors, we will uh, touch on them a bit too, uh, in a little bit. Um, I know people are asking, um, Jaren, um, <clears throat> I know we're going to go a little late. Um, <clears throat> how late can you stay with us? Can you go to 1230 or so? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. So, um, we're probably going to go Quite a bit over here with all the stuff we want to get done if, if everybody's available. Um, so what I wanted to do first is, uh, Re, I wanted to get to you just on your design quickly. Um, just talk a little bit about what you've learned from yourself uh, in, in, in learning your design um, and how it's uh, kind of affected what you've realized uh, that you, you are. So when I first saw my chart, I didn't realize that it was more like a super soldier kind of thing. Um, I, it, it was really surprising to see that, but I wasn't surprised to see most of like the integrity part, um, the focus that's in there, um, because I've always been that type of person that was focused on a lot of stuff. Um, I'm very detailed oriented. And so that's why I'm able to do a lot of the pattern recognition, especially with people, because I'm detailed oriented. Um, <clears throat> also the integrity part, that is number one. I live my life with integrity and I do expect a lot of people to hold themselves with integrity as well. So 
a lot of those things that Jaren has mentioned regarding my profile, that's something that I wasn't surprised. I was just more shocked that all my nine centers were colored in. Yeah, that was quite something uh, for sure. Uh, it was like, whoa, look at all that color. So crazy. Um, yeah, so we're going to get to what projectors are. We're going to get to what reflectors are. I'm going to give you my personal, oh, nice. personal point of view of projector. Um, there but you go. What I want to do is I want to do my moment first um, because I'll kind of tie it in um, afterwards. But uh, we'll do the Greg Schumacher experience, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about projectors, reflectors, and then we'll try to close out the show. It's a lot of information, everybody. We try to fit it all into two hours. It's just, it's so much stuff. We appreciate all the people out there. The chat. No one's are... here on a time on a time constraint. So all right, good. We're all chat good. boards are going crazy. So um, I'm trying to get to some questions. I'm trying to 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 see everybody connecting on those boards. It's amazing to see everybody connecting right now. Uh, so it's great stuff there, everybody. All right, so let's get to the Greg Schumacher experience. And when we come back, we will continue with this amazing cosmic human design show. Hello everyone. And welcome to. does not mean it is evil. What I want you to realize is that darkness is only because there are tall trees, and a lot of dense forest. The sunlight is blocked. Now, I want you to open your eyes. I want you to feel that feeling. I want you to continue that scene as I speak here. I want you to feel yourself in that moment, knowing you have to go in the woods. And whatever feeling you have right now, whatever that, that may be, I want you to keep it. I want you to remember that feeling. Here on Earth, in this time that we live in right now, we feel very, very much by ourselves. A lot of what we do, a lot of what we experience, we feel very alone. There is a day in time with our ancestry, maybe our past lives, that we lived in tribal times times surrounded by amazing people that we trusted. Everybody played roles. If you fell, someone was there to pick you up. And we've lost a lot of that uh, thinking 
and instinct that there are people that are there for trust that we can have in our tribe that will assist us and bring us to new heights. It will help rise us up in life as we can help rise them up in life. I want you to remember that scene that you were just in. Were you there by yourself? Or did you have a group of people you trusted to go in that woods with you? What did your mind show you? In most cases, including my own, we were there by ourselves. We had to take that task on of going into the woods to get what we needed to get by ourselves. In the past, in ancient civilizations, it was really ingrained that you had a team, that you had amazing people surrounding you, and that they were going to assist you. As you looked around that group of people, there were people that you admired, there were people that were very good at certain talents, there were people that you could trust, many people you could trust to do their role, to do their part. People that were stronger than you in areas. People that you really looked up to and wanted to become at some point. What I'm trying to show you is that we are missing a huge part of our lives and something that could really catapult us forward on this place we live, this plane, this realm, we have lost the idea in our minds, in our subconscious, in our instincts, that we are a team. It's not I, but we can surround ourselves with amazing teams of people that can catapult ourselves forward as a community, as a tribe, as an amazing place. We can have family, friends, and people we can depend on in our lives if we just allow ourselves to create space, to believe in it, to manifest it, and then we can really accomplish some great, great things. Yes, it is an independent journey. It is a self journey. It is a reality tunnel journey for us to rise ourselves up, to understand who we truly are, to find that archetype that is amazing and strong within us, that we can enter those woods and we can have the trust in ourselves to survive that. But if we allow ourselves also on this journey to unlock the amazingness of community, to unlock the amazingness of finding our tribe, to attracting our tribe to us, and to building amazing teams. Whether it's in business, whether it's in personal life, friendships, a family, soul family, family of light, then we can assist one another and in turn 10xing what we can do on our own. So I want you to keep that in mind as you move forward in your life and as you build your business and as you build your community, as you build your trust in people around you to open space.
joining me. Okay, we are back. <clears throat> Victoria has jumped on the chat board, so she's there with you guys for a little bit. Um, and uh, we had some questions and stuff like that out there. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. It was all about building our teams. That's my big picture, right? Leaders around the earth, building our teams, everybody in their strengths, design, right? Design's gonna help us build those teams where everybody's the strongest. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I hope that tapped into a little bit of what Re uh, envisions in her life. Re, what was your kind of reaction to building teams and tribes and uh, how's your feeling of that? Well, that's very natural to me because tribe is one of my um, centers and it's really easy to build tribes when you have people who are willing to do it with you and who is um, who can build a cohesive team together. So building tribes and also working together as a team. So like Emily my, and myself and Nicole, we are able to build a team together because of the fact that we have those strengths and also we have those weaknesses that we know that, okay, I lack in some things, but Nicole has, or Nicole lack in some things that Emily has, but we find all of our weeks and strengths to get, weeks and strengths together. And we're able to come together to go on with our vision and build a strong cohesive team throughout QSI. Love that. Uh, Emily, you want to react a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, it goes back to like, before I met you guys, well, actually probably for the last 15 years or so, when I was doing my my personal development, um, you know, it's just kind of like figuring out who I am and what I want to do with life. My mentor always told me to recruit what you're not, right? And that's the same message that Greg's bringing to people. So there are other people that are better at certain things and that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing because they can make you better. They can make the community better. Or in this case, they can make the humanity or, or the galaxy better. So you want to bring those people into your life. You don't want to shun them. You don't want to block them, right? If you do that, you're being an ego because you're saying you can't be better than me. I have to be the best at everything. So we're saying it's the opposite. Just do what you're good at, right? Know who you are so you can be good at what you what you are then allow everyone else to be great at who they are too. And when everybody unites together, that's how all of us become really freaking amazing. Yeah, excellent point there. Um, a lot of times our competition or somebody that looks like competition, we we tend to you know get all defensive and we don't realize that they could be a very big asset if you join forces, if you find common gr grounds, all that type of stuff can be really amazing. So be looking out for that. Make space for something like that. Don't look at it as a threat, but look at it as something that can really improve you, right? A lot of times people are very intimidated by the smartest person in the room. They want to be the smartest, right? But actually you want four people smarter than you so you can learn from them and everything. So you can learn from them and everything else. Uh, Victoria's falling all over the room. <laughs> all right. Okay, so uh, Nicole, uh, you have any thoughts or reactions you'd like to add? No, I mean, that's just, y'all pretty much said it all. It is about forming the cohesive team, which Re and I do great at working together. Um, because I am an empath, sometimes when we're on the call with the ALT, you know, instructors or even the, the ones that are wanting to be admins, I can sense that empath ability where the frequency is kind of changing on the call where re has as we've seen all of her centers are blocked and we laugh and, and talk about that so then i'll chime in and kind of balance out the call again because she just simply can't sense, sense it at all which then builds that cohesive team so we we just work we work great together great stuff uh jaren you want to just finish this off and uh and then we'll move on to other stuff well that was a tremendous segment that was uh that was an amazing segment, Greg. I appreciate that. And the music was pretty good. I think it was a good switch up. We had a good pattern break from all this talking. So that was awesome. And, and my loud voice, by the way, too. Uh, I love what Emily said there, too, about, you know, the element that you don't have to be the best at everything and the element of becoming receptive to this is what I say. Like when we do our school of alms, you know, sometimes I've done manifest your ideal 
you know, person that you want to bring into your life that plays a role. Like you're CEO of your life. So this is non-egoic here. I make a joke. It's like, well, let's see. Greg and Emily are kind of my bosses and leaders. But in a second, let's just back up and say, did I hire them to play a role in my movie? And I'm the real boss. I'm playing with everybody. Right. But I, these people, th these two are examples doing amazing at what they do. Different roles, obviously. But I get to play me in it. They benefit from me. I benefit from them. And we don't try to step into our, you know, the roles of the other person. But this is on a global cosmic scale. Could you imagine if you all out here put that into your daily life and you started to say, wait a minute, who, what actors could I hire in my movie? That would help you with your intention of, wait a minute, I can't do this all myself. What am I missing? What am I not great at? What do I have no idea about, but it would be great if someone did? I'm playing a game that we all could do if we start to recognize our strengths of we we want to bring out but also recognize where we would be benefited and what are not our strengths and what we want to be receptive to and so that we can do something bigger than ourselves or bigger than we would think we'd be able to handle which brings us into masterminds but the masterminds on a whole new level where you're not just randomly meeting people you're intentionally doing it and then cosmic human design where you're just not randomly saying you know how people work but you can actually see it and then the last thing is I know is people are saying about reflectors and then I have people saying, what about manifestors? And we're going to try to touch on all those a little bit. I know we can't get to everything all at once, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, you know, I'm going to try to structure the end of the show. Uh, I'm going to do the projectors part real quick um, and then we'll have Jaron uh, touch on reflectors and manifestors. Uh, and then we'll get to Emily's segment at the end. She wants about oh, 10 yeah. or 15 minutes to explode on you guys. Some big information. So... We'll do it something to that extent. Uh, Exploding we'll coming. Get, yeah. get, get ready to be exploded. Upon, Inner Greg, thigh uh, tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff there. It'll be All sensual. Right. <laughs> it's got to be sexy. Please make it sexy. All right. Let's see. I have a couple of things here. Okay. The first thing is um, I saw this question. So I bring it up on the screen. Take Jaren off the screen. Okay, this question was, uh, how many projectors here are running their own business? How do you navigate all the things you should do to make money to survive versus being a projector and doing things differently and waiting for invitations? So um, that's a really big question among projectors. Um, we try to, we're so talented at building things but we don't know what to do with them at that point. We have them built. Where's the people that can use them, right? We really want to be seen. Uh, that's one of part of us. Um, and if we're not seen, uh, as Jaren will tell you, we, we have a bitter aspect to us. We feel like we're, we're not as, you know, we feel like we're not as used. And we're like, oh, man, I'm not being used and not being seen. It's very big to us to feel that way. Um, so... I, I, I like to read these things. Now, this was a human design site, but it's fine it, because, like I said, once you understand your design and cosmic human design, you can go through and read answers and you can use information from human design, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I like these because they are legitimate questions for projectors. We really do have a difficult time understanding things. So one of the things I came up with, um, let me find it quickly, is that uh, when you're a projector... Uh, where is it? Where did I put it? In my downloads. Oh, I miss. I, I missed. I misplaced it. All right, here it is. Greg, you need a re in your life. I know, right? I need. I need. Not someone acceptable, behind, Greg. I need someone behind the scenes here to like be doing all this stuff uh, <laughs> for me. Um, so let me get that. Okay, right here. Okay, so projector. So when I look at how a projector works in business, in relationships, all that stuff. The most uh, best example I can come up with is a projector is like a spider spinning a spider web. We spin a spider web all around and what we do is when that spider web is made with projects and different things we've made throughout the years or throughout the months, we now wait 
as the spider waits for it to catch things, right? That the bug comes into your web here, does that. That's why the spider builds the web, right? It, it catches things in the web. So we have our web built and we wait for things to find us. We wait for that to, to catch that part of the spider web or that part of the spider web. So that's the best I can come up with for how a projector can build themselves and be seen and be waiting for people to come along. What do you think about that, Jaren? I love the spider web example. That's 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 really great, man. Greg's usually good with subconscious cues, and uh, honestly, that's that's excellent. If you could imagine yourself not quitting building your building your web, and not trying to go out there and find things, just being you and working on your web and working on your inner self confidence. So you're confident in self, but you're not trying to force being seen. You're just who you are, building the web. And all the bugs will come and stick on you. And that's perfect. You'll be brought right in. And that's exactly it. And you'll be seen by those that resonate and those that are ready and those that want it. So absolutely. Good, yeah, good and, call. I'll probably use that again. I'm going to steal it. Yeah, no. And, and you know, we look at um, sometimes we can personify ourselves through animals. Like a generator would be like that ant that's running around doing things, getting this, go collecting stuff. They're very energetic. They're doing a lot of stuff, right? And especially if you're a super soldier, you're really doing stuff. You're doing a lot. And that, that projector is more like that spider, right? The spider is spinning the web overnight. And by the morning, there's this huge web that's already been built. And they just sit back and wait, right? So... It's a very interesting thing. I, I haven't worked out the animals for the rest of them, but uh, maybe you can work them out as we go here, Jaron. <laughs> so uh, with a projector, uh, for my own uh, point of view, for, from living from that perspective, actually in the old human design system, I was also a projector and I was a splenic projector, but I was not a 1-3. I was a different uh, there. It was different in that type and a lot of the other parts of it. But everyone. Yeah, when I realized that I was a projector, a splenic projector, um, I started to realize a lot of things about myself, such as when I would try to uh, impl implement things that were copying other people that would do sales stuff and different kinds of marketing, I was like, oh, that's how they do it. I'll just go to their course. I'll spend a couple thousand dollars and I'll understand it. But I am not designed that way. The moment I start pushing is the moment it puts up a wall and I can't speak through that wall. I'm talking and I think they're hearing it, but it's just reflecting back on me. They ain't hearing nothing. I'm already gone. That is not my design. So we, I would get frustrated. Why am I doing almost exactly what that person's doing, mastering what they're doing and I can't get it to work. And this is where our lives become frustrating. We feel like we are doing all the right things, but we are not getting anywhere. And this is why design is so amazing and awesome. It sounds like I'm selling it right now. But when we do this, we are not, uh, when we're understanding our design, we are now taking steps forward that make sense. And we are actually accomplishing ground ahead of us by doing this. A lot of times with people, you see them, taking they think they're taking steps forward but they're actually taking steps left or right or backwards and they don't realize what is going on right now why can't i gain forward it's because they are not taking the proper steps in their design forward that's the big difference right there um jaron you want to add anything more to the projector yeah i just your one three and your projector self is what you explained there really well about not being able to sell things or do things in other people's way and then, you know, push it and think it's going to work. Uh, that's not only the projector, that's the one three, right? The individual that's got to invent things and do things in your way, along with being the spider web of the projector. So that's all. Just think that's what happens because you can't just say I'm a projector and this person is so we get one another. That's that's not how it works. You, you have to look at the subdivisions. And so you look at your profile. You're going to resonate with people that are your profile or similar. You're going to see polarity in those that are of different profiles. Just like you're going to say, what's the difference between a projector and a generator, et cetera. So I think we've said a lot about projectors. I just think that it's important to recognize to, in the self of a projector, 
to not feel like you have to force yourself to be heard, but to move away from things where you're not being seen and not being supported and not being wanted. So there's this don't force it, but don't also hold on to the stuff that's not working or never going to work, or it's not in transformation towards a better situation. And then the other thing is for all of us to be conscious enough to recognize the call in projectors and the benefit that they bring our lives. When we have a projector that we know we can resonate with and we can be authentic with, they really give us jumps. Or you can be like on the way from Los Angeles to New York City, but you're actually heading to Boston and you don't know it. And a projector puts you right back to where you're actually going to head towards New York City. And that's what they do is guide the efficiency and the energy and the time that other designs need or are pursuing in their life. They help you with that. And let me just fill in quickly, Jaron, before we get to Reflector. Um, don't judge a book by its cover. So if you're going down a street and you see houses, and that's a manifestor house, and that's a manifesting generator house, and that's a projector house across the street, that doesn't mean anything. You don't know what's going on inside that house. You don't know if it's a three-bedroom, two-bath, pool in the backyard, uh, septic system, or city water. You don't know anything about that person yet or that house yet. So you ha it, it is something to know, but you have to know a lot more to understand the person. And I was asking Alexander questions at the workshop because he's an yeah. excellent person uh, with human design, cosmic human design. And I asked him a couple of questions about, let's say you have a one, three splendid projector. Where do you put him in your business? And he goes, whoa, I need to know a lot more than that before I decide where they got to go. And also it's part of their choice too. What are they passionate about? What do they like? So there's a lot more that goes into this than, than just judging the book by its cover. I just wanted to say that. Uh, go ahead, Jaren. Yeah. Uh, well, if we're going to mention things, let's start with manifestors. We've talked about generators and projectors. So just some simple aspects to you manifestors out there. And good job for putting it out in the comment, by the way, because you're supposed to. I'm making a joke, but you're designed to start things and to kind of push a little bit to nudge stuff and inform of ideas and changes that you want to bring about amongst the group. And the cosmos is waiting for you to, because like, unlike the other designs that are relatively set up for stimulus or for a response or for an invitation, right? 9% of the world that's a pure manifester, you're designed to make it happen. You walk it as you move in the direction, as you take the action, the universe, in a sense, relatively bends to your will and brings everything into motion. So you'll be waiting forever. You'll be blaming law of attraction and I'm allowing forever if you're a manifester and not initiating and taking action, as well as recognizing you don't have the energy of a generator consistently, just like the projector. You're designed to be cyclical in your energy. So you go all on. When you don't have it, you don't keep pushing it. You're not designed to do that. Pause, go away, but also spark, start new things, and then inform of your ideas, inform of your shifts. Um, manifestors uh, in the business world are called innovators. Generators are builders, and projectors are advisors. So manifestors initiate and inform and be receptive to the energy of the generators. Borrow it when you have it. Send them on work. They love to respond. If it's right for them, they'll do it. And then ask your projectors for guidance so that you even have better, you know, push or more clear, concise action of what you're trying to implement and get going with. And that's like a little sum up. I love it, uh, Jaron. And uh, I, I noticed that especially with manifestors and manifesting generators, because you act as both at times. Uh, informing is a very big thing and sometimes we forget to inform and when you forget to inform it really offends the whole structure yep. you have to be very careful with that so make sure you're informing what you are about to do with your magic abilities so. yep and and then then you reflectors you're less than one percent but i know in the qsi world i've now come across i believe four of them um but reflectors are the opposite of re you are white in every center, okay? You're less than 1% of the world. In the business world, you're called evaluators. You evaluate amazingly. 
Um, but in the rest of the cosmic human design world, the main theme is who are you around? Your environment and the people you're around matter more than anyone else. You're designed to reflect the health and wealth of the community. As all of us are a little more individual in the intuitive process, you're actually designed through time, through lunar cycles, not only for your own decisions, but to be able to adjust everyone as a whole. You can feel the whole unit and, and you represent how the unit is doing. And in your own life, be in the element of surprise because you're designed to be. So where you're going, you're intentional, you're taking action like everyone else, but in the mystery of life, you're the one designed to be in the most mystery. You don't have a clue. You're just swimming. You're going with the hunches. You're trying things out. You're exploring, but you're in the element of surprise. And when surprise hits a reflector is when the magic happens. And I like to call the reflector the projector's projector, in a sense, because you're here to reflect everything back to us and amplify everything of which another person is. And you're designed to experience that in that time. And if it's positive or the right person, right situation, it's going to be great. But then it passes. Don't become that person. Let it go because you're a chameleon again. At the same time, you can easily be conditioned by relationships and by people to where you lose yourself. So that's a simplistic explanation for reflectors. And you need to see who you're around and what your environment, that's your dream. Put your dream into what's the environment and how are the people operating? Because it's really important for you because you're going to be so subject to the conditioning of others. Yeah, and you're a very small percentage of you. You know, you're you're very small, but you're very uh, unique and important. Um, so remember that about yourself, right? And and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jared, but with all of those those channels open, um, they can be subject to a lot of you know, toxic stuff. You have to be careful. Yeah, they're more sensitive to it. All your centers are open. It does not mean it's a good, I'm glad you brought that up, Greg, but it does not mean you don't have gates activated. You do. So you explore your stuff just like we say. You explore your genes. You explore your prime gifts because they even matter more to you because that's what you can count on. And that's the destiny to unfold that you want to bring out. It's in the mechanics and then in recognizing in the major energy centers that you're receiving from what's around you so much and that you are more sensitive to that. So you want to be really clear and concise of and have boundaries of what you have around you and who you have around you. You just don't have any of the gates connecting. You actually don't have any less active gates than we do. We're all the same. You just don't have connection points of the channel. So that means you're, you know, more open to the energy of what others impress upon you. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff there. Um, I hope everybody got a little bit out of that. Um, that's all we can really kind of dive in for now into those. Um, so I want to ask Nicole and Ree before we get to Emily and her uh, QSI news. Um, uh, Nicole, um, did you want to comment on any of that? Did you heard um, your, your um, experiences with any of those uh, type of designs? Um, yeah, it's, as far as the the projector and the the generator or the manifestors and the rest of them it's once you know about it you you see the cohesive and it just kind of works but um i can't remember specifically which one we were talking about that you have to announce that you're doing something so that the cohesive team can can really understand because then we're not blindsided and hit and i think um i can't remember exactly which one freaky is but she does. manifester yep there you go so she creates and and she can manifest these things but she also lets the team know which is the cohesiveness so then Rhea and i and emily can kind of move forward and manifest and and do what we need to do with with her vision she's really really good with that excellent stuff there and, and re uh, any comments on any of that stuff so being with all of the leaders, we have so many um, different profiles in with the leaders. And one of the um, ones that we have been um, communicating with is reflectors. So there are some reflectors in our group 
And um, I'm able to, once I, once we know what type of profile that they have, we're able to um, adjust or understand and be more compassionate about how they feel too. So um, even with Jaren, when he's a manifesting generator, I know that he needs to be invited to things. And he's always reminding me, I need, remember, I'm a manifesting generator. I need to be invited. So he won't do anything unless he's being invited to do. And so even with like reflectors, um, the ones that we have in our, our leadership team, those are a little bit more of, I can say, sensitive ones. And, um, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, but more like I, they're more of the emotional type where I may have a hard time understanding them, but Nicole can understand them better because she's an empath. Yeah. Great stuff there. Um, yeah. You know, what I, what I wanted to say is I had, um, I had some people ask if there's more places they can go to learn more of this stuff. Uh, does Jaren teach class, those type of things. Obviously at our workshop, we taught about cosmic human design. Um, Lots of questions. Lots of people really had a great time with that stuff. Uh, me and Jaren are working on a program to release. Um, that's the Cosmic uh, Human Design Academy. And then also we are trying to make a plan for maybe teaching uh, at some point together, uh, you know, on, on the Internet uh, for Cosmic Human Design type stuff. So we'll let you know uh, as, as that stuff uh, comes up. But um, CosmicHumanDesign.com, of course, to go get your chart. You can go over to risemediatv.com slash chd to learn more about each thing. I've, I've broken it down so that you can learn more and try to like understand it more. Even the I Ching, which we never got to today, uh, how that is involved in it. So there's a lot to this stuff. Of course, Jaren coaches. I can do some coaching for you guys. I'm not as in-depth as Jaren, but I can certainly get you started and get you uh, understanding yourself better. And I kind of look at things a little differently than Jaren at times. So I can give you a little different uh, aspect on, on your life and how to empower yourself. So those type of things for you guys to uh, sink your teeth into. Um, but we'll let you know as things come up. Uh, Jaren, anything to add to that? Yeah, shout out to Nick. He says that he doesn't like being a martyr for, or he doesn't mind being a martyr for the right cause, but he likes Explorer much better with a laugh. We love his humor and he's right. You martyrs out there, it's correctly explorer, it's wandering, it's trial and error, it's the human experience, there's good and bad and all the rest. It's just experiencing and learning. All threes need to be experiential. But the martyr, in a sense, I don't love the word, but in a sense, if you're doing it for a higher cause and you're finding even enjoying this, you know, it's, wor it's worth it to me. I'm doing something for a cause greater than me, then that's a good potential of a martyr. You're doing something for the whole. The problem with the martyr for the most part is when you're sacrificing yourself for another individual. That's a no-no. The individual is a no-no. If it's for the whole, that's a little different, but it's really explore wander. And then when Ree was talking about me responding as an MG, I didn't talk about any of the UMGs out there, but you're express builders in the business world. You're designed to respond first, initiate next. You turn into a manifester when you're in response. It's all relative to your chart, though. We're all built very differently. So you have a little bit of both, but you mostly recognize the response and the gut. Then you need to initiate and express and express build. When you voice, you have a lot of power when it's in response. So what Ryu was talking about with me is not that I'm invited like a projector, but I'm in response to the action. And when the action is triggering me and the pathway is open, then I enter rather than me forcing that pathway, right? So I just wanted to say those couple little elements before we have the uh, nuclear explosion coming up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for being on the chat board. You guys are amazing. I mean, we're just blowing it up today. So trying to keep up with you guys. It's almost impossible, but love it. Um, yes, before we get to, to Emily's big explosion here... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say uh, that um, we are live every Sunday morning, Rise TV. So please uh, tune in. We we try to do varieties of shows. Uh, this was obviously a, a very big one. You guys are very uh, excited about this stuff. Learning about self is so amazing. Um, we unlock so many things about ourselves when we can 
really see what runs us, what kind of programs run, run us, and, and then we start to really catch fire into who we can be and those superpowers like Wonder Woman up there, right? We can really catch, catch our superpowers, our uniqueness, and we can unlock that part of us, which we desire since birth. We really understand uh, in, in the instinct of self that we are much more than we think we are that much more than this world allows us to be. And this is what we're trying to unlock in you guys, to become these new earth leaders, these new earth avatars that can really lead people forward um, in example, right? Leading by example in who we truly are. So that's that's the, the amazingness of who we are. Uh, and then also on Wednesday nights, we do our School of Ohm. Please tune in for those. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now, please give it a like, subscribe, whatever. Uh, just, you know, help contribute in a, in a, an amazing way. So thank you so much. All right, Emily, I don't have an intro for you for your QSI news, but the floor is yours. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having this call specifically on, on this topic specifically with this team specifically. And by the end of my bomb, you'll understand why. Now, again, everything that we do is with quantum entanglement, divine timing. A lot of this information has kind of been finding its way through the big spider web that Greg's mentioned, and it culminated yesterday with a lot of kind of seal the fate information, which is why this is such divine timing. So I want to kind of bring people through a quick history, and that will help make sense what I'm about to share in terms of the bomb. Now, as a quick recap, re is probably the best person I've ever seen at activating people and activating details or projects. Nicole, fantastic at communicating um, complex things simply. So it, it takes it from, in this case, my intel or someone's intel, like Nick also shares very complex intel, but she helps break it down so the masses can learn. And then I bring the revelation through the quantum consciousness. That's what Jaren talked about at the beginning of the call. But the quantum consciousness is triggered by the stars, which is stellar, which is the cosmos. And then Greg and Jaren had this massive plan on teaching everybody in the world, in the universe, this stuff, right? This cosmic human design stuff, this manifestation stuff, this self-empowerment stuff. So collectively, our teams combined so our one giant team is really doing the same thing from multiple angles to help people tap into themselves. So why is this important? Couple key highlights, Jaron mentioned at the beginning of the call, destiny points. He talked about how this is the greatest humanitarian group on the planet and how you have this magical life in front of you. And if you will just walk authentically, you'll find your dreams and more importantly, you'll find your missions will come true. And I'm highlighting these key words because one thing that I constantly hear in chat is people are always asking, I don't know if I've realized what my mission is. I'm still trying to find my mission. What is my path or my purpose? I know why I'm here. I can feel like there's something special about me, but I don't know just yet. So hopefully with today's bomb, maybe hundreds more people will find their soul mission. So a couple background pieces. In June of last year, I made a post and I said, my cosmic human design explains exactly why I both unwillingly and unintentionally, I was forced to create QSI because it did, it was never part of my, let's call it my egoic plan. The things that I wrote for myself, this was never part of it, but it had to happen because of quantum entanglement. And through the execution of that, we have become one of the quintessential parts of teaching the QFS, which we now know as the QSFS, but also Juicera. I also, in that post, I talked about how important it was that everybody learn about cosmic human design, because when you do, just like what we've been talking about on this call, you'll see again why you are so crucial also to this bigger picture. And so in that post, I mentioned you know, work with key people like Greg and Jaren because they're the experts in this. They will help bring your vision, your mission into reality. Somebody today posted about Dr. Hawkins, the map of consciousness with the with the tiers of the, the 100 numbers. I think many of you guys have seen that picture before. Um, 
but I found what was interesting about that particular post is they were starting to do some calculations. And in that message, they said, we need roughly 811 people in QSI to be at a certain level. I think he said six or 700 level of, the, of that frequency in order to cover or to counterbalance 8 billion people on the planet. Now we know there's not 8 billion, it's closer to 1 billion in terms of the D-class. But so let's say 100 people within QSI at that right frequency can cover the whole world. What happens if there are more than just roughly 100 of us? What happens if there are 1,000 of us? Now we can start to blanket the whole universe in that kind of light, okay? So now we're leading up into this big layer bomb that I talked about on Friday's call. Friday's call, we had this massive four-hour D-class and in it, I talked about the timeline at the end of it. And I said on February 20th, that's when we had protocol 20, which activated so many things. And it walked us through 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, right? And so this protocol 20 triggers the quantum consciousness. I called it the start. And from the start, we saw so many pieces dropping in. And a lot of people picked it up in our chat. They started commenting about synchronicity and how we're all coming together in oneness, and we're all starting to vibrate at a higher frequency, we're starting to intuit faster at the same time too. So today's D-class picks up on February 25. That's literally the date that this D-class started. So if I go back to January before I talk about February 25, I wrote a post about, I, I called it a little bit of white hat history. And this is the post that I made when I came back from my Kazakhstan trip. And it talked about how this guy named Pugachev was one of the first white hats in history. He started a massive global movement. But one thing I wanna highlight on this post, I wrote in a section, I said, D-class, doesn't this sound exactly like QSI's role in helping to build the QSFS? The white hats, the Q team, the galactics, they're offering us a once in a universe time chance to be rewarded, not just financially, but with promotions and compensation. And he said, provided that we all individually and collectively, we pass the tests and there will be so many more tests coming down throughout this year and into our, the rest of our life. But I said, this sets us up where it's not just us, it's our next of kin, it's our family, it's our lineage. We will have a chance, we will have a place to help humanity. And then I wrote, or universe, a T, meaning it's not just for humans, which is humanity, it's for the whole universe, which is university. And I wrote, perhaps this is the, you, the new university. So yesterday I was talking to somebody, his name is Blair, and he asked me, is QSI gonna be a school? And I said, well, yes, we already are a school. And so I think that maybe tongue in cheek, they're like, okay, there's something to this word but I'm not giving them the details. This is why. So I go back to February 25. This is when I'm gonna start reading some, some messages now. This is a conversation between me and our developer, Ivan. Ivan is with the Seller Russia team. He's our main developer who works directly with the Galactics and he will pass messages back between the Galactics and myself to then bring to our community. So on February 25, he said, I've been away on expeditions. We are building a school. And I asked him, is a school in the Arctic or, or somewhere else? And he said, if only you knew, but I'll tell you, it's in Archangel Michael's realm. They took me to their realm. If only I could describe the colors I've seen. Archangel Michael told me that some members of your QSI community have had dreams of that place too. Maybe just a tiny glimpse of it, but I hope they will describe it to everybody else. So could you ask the community to describe it, show them a glimpse of what we are, are about to see? And I wrote, is this like an angel school? Is this some kind of galactic prep school that we're preparing for? And he wrote, QSI University. So he said, they, meaning the galactics, they asked if you could lead the university, be some sort of principal, they call it, being my position, the divine chancellor of knowledge. And they said, 
Also, members of QSI will have the honor to be the celestial guardian of academic enlightenment. And they wrote, this entity, meaning the university, will be responsible for overseeing the spiritual and intellectual growth of students, guiding them towards higher understanding and enlightenment in accordance with divine principles. So I replied, academic enlightenment, I think, should also embody inductive principles for logic and reasoning too. Is this correct? Since we're now learning that that is also in accordance with divine enlightenment, so it's not just pure academia. And he said, yes, you will be free to explore anything you want to because you're going to be the divine chancellor of knowledge. And as such, you'll be getting supernatural powers and you'll be able to be in whatever realm or place you would like to be. And it's not just in the movies where you see people, you know, sitting behind their desk, essentially. And he said, these guardians that you choose right, the celestial guardians of academic enlightenment, these guardians that I choose will also have powers, the same supernatural powers to be in multiple realms and multiple places at the same time, because that's what we need to be able to teach people and also to operate. He wrote, in the angelic realm, the tech is literally supernatural. That's just how it works. We don't know how it does. It just is. You cannot code something. It's just supernatural. So I wrote to him, I'm thinking more than anything, it's going to be done in conjunction with NFT and the blockchain and quantum education, like StorySync, the ICO we just launched yesterday. So those will store the records of truth. And our job is to preserve the integrity of the truth and expand it to the universe so people adopt these philosophies, these methodologies. And from there, they can truly learn because sometimes you can't learn it by studying. Sometimes you have to learn it by doing. So we have to bring these truths and these methodologies to people so they can explore it in their own personal existence and that'll add to the collection. And he wrote exactly. Only QSI members will be a part of it, as I told you before, you were chosen for this task. So then I wrote, this sounds so unicorny. And I started researching unicorn because we have this joke in QSI that certain people have been calling unicorns. And what I found through doing research on the symbolism behind a unicorn is a unicorn is a highly intelligent creature described as outgoing, energetic, and smart a unique wild horse that's seen as a symbol of chastity, purity, grace, peace, and tranquility. These unicorns have the power to render poisoned water potable and to heal sickness. And I'm adding my own interpretation that I can argue these unicorns are also healing poisoned water, like the poisoned well, which is our poisoned education. And so unicorns essentially they have a weakness for the pure of heart and for those with the pure spirits. Now, in QSI, I've been calling two people specifically unicorns, Liana and Manuel. And I know on Rise, you guys are familiar with Manuel, and you haven't met Liana yet. They're like two peas in a pod. They're just two of the same people. They're like brothers and sisters or twins or whatever. And Liana had written before, um, this is probably a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. She wrote, I don't really have a specific material project anymore. I am my humanitarian project. Everything I do is to evolve and serve God and humanity to the best of my abilities. And she wrote, now that St. Germain has made such a splash here, meaning here in QSI or here on planet, and I've had the time to reflect over the years, it makes total sense that QSI as an international humanitarian collective is blessed by and likely serving the violet ray of alchemy. And I wrote to Ivan, the violet ray of alchemy, even though these are the words that Liana wrote, I misread the word and I thought she wrote the violet ray academy. And here we are literally talking about Archangel Michael's academy, right? The, the celestial or the heavenly university. So I asked Ivan, who am I? And I, I threw down a whole bunch of different theories and I said, am I Francis Bacon? Because I've been learning so much about him. I don't think that I am. I don't know, but I feel like I have so much resonance with him. 
And he wrote, you're not Francis Bacon, but you're a disciple of him. So whoever I am in my past lives, and apparently through now, I'm a disciple of Crispy Bacon. And I said, is there anybody that I might know in history? And he wrote, you have to continue to explore this naturally. I'm not allowed to say these things straightforwardly to you. It could ruin the timelines. So that'll probably be part of my future D classes. So people in QSI are always asking, who are they, right? Who am I? Why am I worthy to be here? So right now I'm saying on day one, I'm calling Liana and Manuel my unicorns. I'm also saying that they are going to be the first that I induct into this program, this celestial guardian of, of education. So that's my gift to Manuel is his homecoming. But because of quantum divine timing and just the way the cosmos throws things to you when you act with intuition and you take action, everybody on this call is going to be one of our cosmic unicorns because that's literally what Rise and what QSI does separately. So this is why we work so well together, you know, through the cosmos. So Jaren, Greg, welcome. You're already a part of QSI, but now you're going to be a part of this bigger cosmic university at the same time too, which is is beautiful because Greg was talking about how he's casting the spider web and how he wants to create a platform to teach people at a global level. You'll get that chance. We'll support you every single way we can on prior rise calls or school of own calls. Rather, I've been talking about how in my vision, we're all getting the people who have um, qualified for the bright Emily spas, how we get three. And even since, you know, a month or two ago, I said, I just have this vision that I have to give one of my Bright Emily spots to you guys to do something with this in the future, because it's going to be massive. And now I finally know that answer, right? It's this. And so I mentioned in the Big Lear Bomb, the D class from Friday, that we are all nodes. And how on this call, we talked about how Rhi is a super soldier, and she's like the server or the matrix or the ecosystem that brings all the nodes together. So if we think about that visual or that context, Yes, we are the guardians of Stellar because we're the nodes of Stellar, but we're also the guardians of the galaxy because Stellar is the galaxy. And now because so many people in our chat have intuited this guardian uh, terminology, this uh, enlightenment technology, the synchronicity terminology, we now with approval and more specifically direction from the galactics and Archangel Michael, we are now going to become the celestial guardians of academic enlightenment. So my job, I, I have many roles to play, but one of them is to find more unicorns. I will be discovering who you are through QSI, another reason why we need people to actively engage in chat. Because the more you tell us about you and the gifts that you bring, I can figure out these guys are unicorns. These guys are unicorns. Maybe some of you are not meant to be unicorns because you have a different role to play. But I think this will help hundreds of people understand that maybe in the past they were thinking, I don't want to do this humanitarian project. I don't want to be this um, defender of the galaxy. I have something else. I want to share the truth because we've been bombarded by lies. How do I do that? This is that answer. So I don't know what the official name of this university will be yet. They did give me the honor of naming it. So I have a couple, a couple more days to think about this. But I just love how in a lot of our ICOs, the different developers from different teams have been writing about how they are working with research, financial, scientific, educational institutions. And now we've been officially given our title of you know QSI University. So we've now been officially inducted in as an institution. And that's again why we're partnering so much with these developers because we're bringing in this kind of quantum collaboration into the future. So I hope everybody enjoyed that little D class and a little bit more of the role we will all collectively be playing in the future. Wow, Emily. <clears throat> Great stuff there. I loved it. Um, for years, me and Jaron have talked about New Earth School. Uh, we have a lot of people in Saratoga here who have talked about it. Absolutely amazing. I have to read this comment from Rio. Uh, the picture on my wall in front of me right now says, when someone told me I live in a fantasy land, I never fell off my unicorn. 
<laughs> Amazing stuff there. Um, love Greg, it. I want to point out something really quickly. Almost every single time I've heard you introduce yourself, and we're talking for two years now, you have said something along the lines of, I, I'm like, I want to be a new earth leader, right? You always say, I want to, I hope to. Today, I was listening very intently for that. And you didn't say, I want or I hope. You just said, I am a new earth leader. And I think that is such a massive turning point because specifically of this confirmation that we have now. Yeah, and Emily, that came directly from Jennifer, who's from Virginia, who came to our event in, uh, in Tampa. She said to me, she said, Greg, I'm going to tell you something. When you get on there and you say, I hope to be whatever it is, a new earth leader, you are a new earth leader. I want you to hear, I want to hear that with conviction. So she's the one that pushed me into it. So look at the ecosystem we have around us. So thank you for noticing. And I was able to call out Jennifer. So yes. Uh, Jaron, your response here. Well, I've talked a lot today, so I'm just going to say I'm humbled and uh, this is exciting and not surprising at all for those that are part of this field right now, right now in this universe that's watching this show right now, everyone here. It's not surprising for all of us. We know where we're going. We're doing the best we can and we're going to keep rising. And that's what rise came from. You know, the, the ascending nature of your true self in this body, into the light body or into all the other things we could give names to it with. But when Emily's talking about being everywhere at different times, omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, that whole thing, the light body, that's the truth. That's something I've experienced twice already in this body. I didn't hold it, but I had it. I was seen in it. In those periods, you're a different being while you're still you. And all I can say is I can only imagine in the great revelation of these experiences and things that I have no idea about. My human self will be astonished, but I know that's where we're heading. You know, and, and that activation sequence that I talked about earlier, your, your suns and earths on both sides are to help you in the activation sequence of your light, the activation sequence of your ascension. They're so important and they play one role in you elevating your frequency in who and what you are for whatever it is. Here on earth, beyond here, everything else is all can be seen there so that you can live in higher principle. Like be more authentic, be more confident, but also live in higher principle of cosmic consciousness which isn't and hasn't been a tribal element for a long time in this realm let's just say ever in a sense to where many people all at once are kind of coming together to elevate before this was only reserved for certain enlightened masters you know it was only few beings here and there throughout the time but now there's this special time but we're even in more of that special niche of we're all ascending together. So that's my spiel. I'm just excited. I'm just ready for the next step. And uh, yeah, nothing should surprise anyone at this point other than we love you, Emily, for your bomb drops. They're just, you know, like normal news, <laughs> normal stuff, the weather, but thank you. So Jaron, will you be teaching from a pyramid when you are a professor? Uh, <laughs> we'll come to find out a lot of the, a lot of the geometry and math is in that pyramid. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, uh, you want to give us some final thoughts from yourself and how you enjoyed Rise TV? Um, first of all, I mean, it was thank you for having us on. It was phenomenal um, to not only expose Rhea and I's face so that everyone now in QSI and everywhere else, they know who we are. We're not just these mythical creatures behind the computer. We're not AI. We're not bots. We're actually humans um, getting work done. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm excited for, for now, um, and the future it's, it's, it's so, it's going to be so bright, so amazing. And as long as we just stay in our true authentic self and keep manifesting and believing in that and understanding that the cosmos will give us what we need, we just have to call upon them. Um, that was, that's the biggest takeaway that I took from Jaron in our sessions. And it's very, very true. You just got to you know, hone into your true self and then let the cosmos kind of ask for, for that help if you need it or the answers or, 
you know, the guidance and then everything will kind of happen and appear for you. But I appreciate everyone that showed up and um, I love each and every one of y'all. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. Appreciate it. Uh, Re, uh, your final words and, and everything you experienced here today. So this was such an amazing show. Um, just learning about others with their design and also with everyone in QSI, we're all embracing the cosmic human design part. And I'm just so proud of everyone. Um, I encourage everyone to pull up their chart, pull up, um, just learn more about yourself, study uh, uh, of your profile, study everything about yourself. Because when you start learning about cosmic human design, you will know that that is actually you. And um, it will give you a lot more potential to do things that you thought that you would never have done before. Um, it's going to give you a lot of confidence. And I'm just so proud that QSI is embracing um, Cosmic Human Design. So thank you for inviting us for, to the show. Um, everyone, thank you for allowing us to share our Cosmic Human Design with each of you. Yeah, thank you, Ree. appreciate you coming on the show and uh, really enjoyed meeting you and, and Nicole both. Uh, Emily, your final words for our audience here. I'm like Jaren. I talked so much on this call, so I'll just keep it brief. We are the mythical creatures that we've been studying. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We're unicorns. And so I'm going to do my best to try to get to know every single person in QSI. I know that's the tall order. But it's because I really want, and not just me, Nicole, we are entire leadership team. We want to make sure that you guys are fulfilling your mission in life. And we can't know that unless we start to get to know you guys. So please help us help you, right? That, that famous quote from all the movies. And so I, I just so look forward to working with everybody to fulfill their own potential, because that's how we're going to be able to help not just our planet or our little regions or communities, but the entire freaking galaxy which is the biggest mission, I think, that one can have. Love it. Thank you, Emily. I'm, oh, go ahead, Jared. Shout out to you, Manuel. I remember 15 months ago meeting up with you, and I see where you have traversed. You're an amazing 3-5 emotional projector. Forget all that language. He's an amazing dude. And I just look at where you are now just by being you. So I know he'll watch this if he's sleeping at this time. He'll watch. Oh, no. It's early. I'm thinking it's Wednesday night. You probably are watching now, buddy. I don't know. Love you, man. That's what I wanted to say. And everybody, if you haven't yet, you're not aware, please, we're on our seventh YouTube. We decided to start like eight months ago again. Please like, share, because we were shut down so many times. Like us on there so we can grow the YouTube. If you're unaware of the Rumble, please like and go on to the Rumble channel as well. And it was support and help us get the word around. We're not here for quantity. It's quality. But at the same time, it would help. And just so you know where to go and all the things that we put out there. So we'd appreciate that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jaron. Yeah, we have like we made it over 1500 uh, followers. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you. You guys are real followers. It's not fake. You guys really participate and do all kinds of great stuff. So we appreciate that. Uh, throw some likes up there. We got 80 likes. We got a lot more people watching than that. We actually got Vicky's birthday right now uh, watching numbers. So appreciate it, everybody. Thank you so much. Chatters, you chatted all day long. Your fingers must be hurting. You must have carpal tunnel at the end of this. So appreciate you guys. Uh, Wednesday night for the School of Ohm, I will give you your question. I didn't get to the question today, so tune in Wednesday night for your question that you can answer for us, and uh, we'll, we'll dissect that together. Um, so appreciate everybody. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Ree. Thank you, Quantum Stellar Initiative. Thank you, Emily for uh, being amazing and, and your big announcement. Appreciate it. New Earth School coming your way. Uh, and Archangel Michael, one of the meditations that we did one night, uh, actually we dedicated a show to him. So awesome stuff there. Uh, Wednesday night, tune in, 9 p.m. Eastern, live for the School of Ohm and uh, next Sunday for Rise TV. Thank you, everybody. A very long show. Maybe we broke the record. We usually do with Emily. <laughs> we'll see you next time. This is Rise TV signing off.